what lies beneath the lands of Vandelver. Danger. Riches. Power. Puppies. Death. Threats that seek to overwhelm the village. And threats that seek to overwhelm the Sword Coast itself. With the threat undiscovered, an empire of evil will rise. War will plague the Sword Coast and beyond. Fate itself may rely on four unlikely heroes. And so, another adventure is about to take place. Cloak and Stagger presents Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, brought to you by Cloak and Stagger. Uh, episode 13. Hey. hey! And hey, y'all. How you doing? Welcome. Hello. Welcome, hey. welcome. You silly motherfucker. Uh, you may have noticed we have a new player at the table tonight. Uh, Taunt couldn't make it. Also, it's Saturday. Uh, we're, he we're here because of uh, some scheduling confusion and conflicts. But we do have a replacement over there. Shepard will be playing as Taunt tonight. I've got high hopes for him, so we'll see how that goes. Is it working? Check. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. So, uh, I want to get right into the game, unless y'all got, got anything you want to talk about before we go D&D &D roleplay game mode? Nothing at the moment. Yeah, all good. All I'm ready. Okay. So, we ended last time with, uh, we went overtime like, by like a freaking hour. So, because uh, a big, big combat, we made the mistake of starting a battle 30 minutes before time to end. You should well never worth do that. it, well worth it. <laughs> uh, you are at Wyvern Tour, you just ended that combat. Literally, blood still on your knuckles and weapons from where we, where we stopped, because we didn't do a single thing else. So I suppose one of y'all needs to talk about how you got there or why you got there. How'd that go down? Ever? Nah, he always stonewalls me anytime I try to get him to do a recap. Uh, he won't do it. I'll do it. All right. So we go into this battle. This is how I remember it. We should have got our asses kicked, but like as per usual, battles where we should get our ass kicked, we do really well. Battles where we should do really well. Uh, Wesley dies. But, uh, so, yeah, we pretty much kick everybody's asses. Um, and we're there. That's, we didn't do much of anything last week except we got there. We found out about uh, Flynn's backstory. Just a lot of story. We did. Story last time. We did. Uh, oh, Flynn and uh, Wedge's backstory. Kind of had like a little heart to heart. That was nice. Do you remember any of the, the crazy personal details that were revealed during that? You guys are welcome to help for this part. It was a lot. It was big lore from everybody. I don't remember Flynn so much, but I know he was talking to Wesley like 10 feet from me. Like I couldn't hear. <laughs> so I kind of like... Talking oh, shit. Yeah. Kind of uh, interjected and... Uh, I guess to sum it up, is like, no matter how nice the cage is, it's still a cage. Yeah, that sounds about right. That might apply to a lot of y'all. Yeah. I suppose. And with Flynn wanting to get out of his uh, predicament, I guess we'll call get, it. Get my family out of their predicament. Yeah. It's still still working towards that. And then Wedge, uh, Wesley, uh, completely uh, unaware of a predicament, but. <laughs> yeah. In one. <laughs> still uh, still <laughs> learning about the world. And all then jobs, game. Wedge, <laughs> although coming from like a very good background, mm -hmm. still kind of. Still a cage. Uh, and we learned that your company needs to turn this, itself the fuck around. 
as yeah, like terrible a, business practices. I like the one percent unhappy. Oh man, it's such a cage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel so terrible. <laughs> I have too many options. <laughs> I can't afford this fifth pool. <laughs> hey, cage is a cage. Doesn't matter if it's golden. Uh, and then after that night, after that night, we got to Reverend Tor. We split with a uh, seven, Darren. Darren meet Edom, Prius. Mr. Darren Edom, you got the second time. The orchards. Darren, he's going back to meet his daughter. We continued on to Reverend Tor. Uh, kind of snuck up on one dude, and he tried to run for help. Technically, I guess he got help because he was dead by the time the help showed up. And then we annihilated everybody else. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't think I don't remember anything else happening. Oh, you you beat everybody up, ogres, uh, bugbears. Flynn came in clutch with keeping an ogre completely like fighting himself in the mirror that while is, talking shit the entire time. That is true. An ogre was. Fighting <laughs> I do remember ogre. like it wasn't anything you had to do, but you forgot you had your. You were using it as an action, and you didn't have to do it. So like <laughs> you wasted half of your turns. <laughs> just just like. Talking shit to him as mm-hmm. a, his own reflection. Yep. But he, he didn't. He didn't even have to do anything else. He knew he had it covered. Easy peasy. I knew he didn't have a great relationship with his father. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But it, I think it, it ended with him like running to the back of the cave, and cowering. Uh, I think he. Uh, Before he snapped out of it. He. Yeah, but then he ran back up on y'all. But you did your your thing to him. You know, he's he has Talks no more. Did his thing. Didn't you? Go ahead and pass that to Mr. Wedge, please. Hey. You got the inspiration for yeah, the evening. I did the thing. <laughs> yeah, Remind get... me to use this. All right. I suppose we can go ahead and jump into some game then here. So it's time to ask questions. Uh, you guys are currently inside of Wyvern, Wyvern Tor. Uh, Is that Wyvern? You have felled many creatures in here. And looking towards the back wall, it looks like there might not be much else to this place. I actually have a... A little map I want to show y'all now. This is actually what the place looks like that you are at currently. Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Looks like it's a little t- small. Yeah. Is that the inside of the cave? Yeah, you got the inside of the cave there, Where did too. we come in at? Uh, you Where guys you? came in from the top portion right here. It was a lot more wooded on the battle map we had. Okay. Just pretend it's close as possible to it. Yeah. So, you were inside this cave where a bunch of no-gooders were hanging out. What do you like to do? I'd like to look around, um, see if there's anything of value uh, or anything like um, uh, letters, notes, uh, maps, anything like that that might have some information on uh, the other bandit activity, possibly. I goblins. would like to climb mm-hmm. up on Tonk's shoulders, like Master Blaster from Mad Max and the Thunderdome. How is Tonk feeling right now? How much how much help is he I rocking? Only Since he can't say no. He's feeling great. <laughs> I'm feeling so great. He might be feeling pretty good. I can't I can't tell right now. So you want to climb on his shoulders and Math Blaster? What? What are you talking no, about? I used to play that game when I was a Master kid. Blaster. He it's a character from Mad Max and Beyond the Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. Where it's a like a giant creature with a dwarf person on the back of him. Oh, okay. You go to climb his shoulders, but like, oh no, no, not right now. No, I just I need a, <laughs> later. I need to take a breather. Okay, you you go 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 look at all the shinies in the cave. Go ahead. All right, and then I will proceed to look at shinies and any kind of mechanical stuff. I also want to look for stuff. Interesting, just interesting stuff that I'd find interesting. Okay, uh, this little cave is. Uh, I find anything interesting. It's fairly dirty, I can tell you that. Like, you'll find, like, maybe empty, shattered bottles on the ground everywhere, half-eaten food, just, you know, typical, we don't respect our environment bandit behavior. Uh, However, there is, over against the far wall, across from where you guys are at, and one of those little, uh, those little indentures, the more southern one, actually. Ping it. Oh, you you want to go ping it? I'll ping it. All right, you want me to ping it? You only ask. I will ping it. It's right here. Bop. Right there. There is a chest... Closed. Sitting there. Uh, no tables with any notes or any papers or anything like that on. Just a chest. Any, like, sleeping bags or... Like, 
Any indication that they camp there? Well, they're, or, they're not. Well, they're kind of like bed rolls. It's more so like things from nature that looks like they might be soft, but probably aren't used to make a bed. That okay, type of like stuff. Leaves and yeah, small branches. Like yeah, sticks just to build character for the bed. You know that type of stuff. Okay. Um, I'll I'll go up to the chest and uh, take a closer look at it. Is it locked? Does it doesn't it have a lock. It has a keyhole on it. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't think that they would trap a chest in their own cave, but then again, they are stupid. Uh, that should be safe than sorry. I'd like to check and see if I can detect any kind of, uh, anything out of the ordinary with the chest. Let's investigate that chest. Give me an investigation check. Uh, 10. Ooh. All right, so you look at this chest, and you just you look around the cave and just see this closed chest with a keyhole on it, and then see just debris and bullcrap in the rest of the cave. You look on its sides, behind it. You don't see, like, a little tiny string or rope attached to it going towards the cavern floor uh, or nothing connected to it that you could see. It looks looks like there's a chest sitting there. All right. Maybe, uh, maybe okay. it's in one of their pockets. Maybe. And, um, or maybe it's unlocked. Oh, <laughs> did, you, did you try to open it? It opens up. Ah. <laughs> uh, looking inside this chest, uh, you can see there's a bunch of coins in it. Unfortunately, you don't see any golden ones. You see a whole lot of silver. Um, if you had to guess, probably about 180 silver in there and 15 copper pieces, strangely. You do see three vials uh, laying in there as well with a bright pink liquid inside. Um... Well, it looks like we found uh, some stuff. Uh, lots of silver. Poor man's gold, I always said. Um, all right, I, I guess we, sp uh, we can split this up. Uh, how much silver did you say it was? About 180. That's 45, I think. 180, 45, yeah. Ooh. What else was in there? Like three pink liquids, right is what you 15 said? 15 copper pieces and three vials of bright pink liquid. Oh. Can we go ahead and try to identify what the liquid is? Yeah, what do you do? Uh, Wesley just wants to grab a, a vial and uh, shake it around and, and make a look sees at it before he opens it up and sniffs it. You grab it and you just shake it and it, yeah. it just shakes around. And then you open it up and sniff it? Yeah. It smells. No, but not sniff. I go like this. Oh, you take you it off. Yeah. You do a waft. You waft. Uh, it smells really, really good. Um, but you wouldn't know what it is still because you are not. You haven't really been in a lot of cities. Have you, Wesley? Uh, no. Okay. I would ask him to hand it to me and then put my pinky on it like this. And... Okay. You do, do, <laughs> the, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> put your pinky <laughs> But it, it's okay. like, they need to hear it. No shot. That's going to get heard. <laughs> you that your, was him. Put your pinky on it, <laughs> you shake it, and you, you, you taste it. Um, as your, your pinky's going to your tongue, and, I mean, you can't stop it because it's like right here where you go, ah, hey, yeah, eh, and you get on your tongue. Oh, it tastes terrible, but, but it smells good. The smell, you immediately identify. This is perfume. Oh. So wait, wait, wait. I couldn't smell it before I got to go get right blah, 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 blah. Well, you, you made it sound like you just walked up to him and said, hey! Right? Fair enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Raven, Dad? It's perfume. Okay. You could, that might come in handy. Ah, yeah, you yeah. could use that when we get back to town. <laughs> sure. Personally, you speak to the lady again. you it like this? You know this type and of stuff. And then taste. Probably sells for like five gold a piece. Oh, uh, Wesley's going to taste it too because Mr. Raven then told him to. What's it taste like to me? Like is it, it different? Tastes like something you shouldn't put in your mouth. Like immediately, th 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 then you want to scrape your tongue. This with your isn't teeth. as good as how it smells. <laughs> yeah, it's perfume. Is it always your first instinct to just taste strange liquids that you find in the cave, in a cave, in a chest? I don't like Tonk's instinct to taste stone. It's not nothing like that. He's licked stone before. Right. There's plenty of stones everywhere. Someone made that. That's why a little bit. Hmm. Makes sense. He just wanted to make sure it was what it was. Keep Tide Pods away from Wedge. Got it. Um, 
Is there nothing else of note in here? Uh, looking around the room? Mm. There is. As you turn around, you just give the room another just quick look, uh, expecting this just, just, it is exactly what it looks like, just oh, a shithole Wes for bandits. Wesley <laughs> wants to sniff around and see if any of the bodies smell like that perfume. He wants to figure out, like, who was wearing it. <laughs> So Which one of these has a secret? Walk up to one, just the bugbears and ogre and just squatting. You want your rat? Huh? Can, you can it do that? Can rats? Do, can well, rats the, yeah, rats can, but like I don't know if I'm, that's like might be a, like an abuse of power, right? Well, they're kind of well, like I mean, you just you want to order to sniff it, it just sniffs, and then what? Does it have like increased skills on sniffing, so he doesn't have to go around all the bodies and sniff? How would it communicate that to him? It looks like the I'll way to point this rat like... has been made, it's uh, <laughs> lost its functions to... No, no, this is the familiar rat. Oh, the familiar rat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, I mean, you can sniff it, sure. All it's right, familiar, so... it has uh, rat stats. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to rat stats. Pop, pop out his rat hmm? to, so the rat can help him sniff. Okay, rat's like, following you around sniffing. Like, Wesley. Give me, like, plus two on your it, sniff checks for that. Tell it to sniff. Uh, Mr. Raven, then, too, find out where this. who is using this perfume. It must be one of them. There's no one else here. And then I tell him to do that. Okay, you order that, and the rat just starts scurrying into these corpses and starts sniffing them. Yeah, and I, I tell them to, like, hop up on the person if they smell the perfume on it. Uh, while it's doing its sniff check, uh, Flynn, you see something actually on the northern wall, on almost at the exit of uh, where I even tore itself. Uh, there's a very crude drawing on there. From this, this is, looks like a, it just looks like a goblin. Do you go up and examine it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, heading up to that wall, um, it is just that, it is a crudely drawn lanky goblin, but uh, this one's drawn with a crystal jutting from its skull. Ooh. How, how, like, is this like a, a third grader drawing, or like very is it poor. like sidewalk chalk? Yeah, it's essentially like they took something that just had some coloration pigment, like maybe some charcoal or something with it that's like gray and just, just carved on the wall. Okay. Um, I wonder if these are those fucked up goblins that they were telling us about. Uh, long skulls? Those, this, I mean, it's, but it looks like it's got a rock or something sticking out of its skull. None of them have described stones sticking out, right? Have you heard anything, Tonk, about stone goblins, stone brain goblins? No, I know I'm supposed to, like, the stone is good, but... You don't put it in your head. Hmm. So wise words. <laughs> so they've always good. described the <laughs> their skulls being longer. Does it look longer or does it just look like there's a stone in their head? It looks like a standard goblin head but with a huge crystal just jutting out of it. Okay. Did me and the rat finish sniffing bodies or, or are they just doing that? I'll say at this point they it would have finished sniffing bodies. None of them smell like that perfume at all. Oh. Okay. Who who would even draw this? It's not even very good. Is this, like, is this someone's girlfriend? What the fuck is this? Check your cube. What's in there? It doesn't have anything on that. It's not an item. You didn't even look. How do you know? I'm gonna, I'm... I'm just going through the motions. I'm not even looking for real. Just, I, nothing. I have to put it, I have to put some stuff in. But there was, so it was completely empty, except for what you've put in. Well, no, it's got information on items and things, but not people and places. And you have all of that drawings. memorized. You know exactly everything that's in there. I know what it comes preset with, mm -hmm. which is a very extensive collection of information on magical items. What did you eat for dinner last night? I didn't ration, actually. <laughs> Just Same as you. Bland ration, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how the fuck are you supposed to remember everything that's in that cube if you can't tell me no, what no, you no, had no, for no. dinner? Okay, so... Because I didn't put make, what I... Make it make sense to me. All right, all right. So when the Fulgrim sends us out with these cubes, it has a library of items in it. And you memorize them. No, no, no. The cube has it. Okay. It has it. Right. But then I take notes on my... Like a journal, diary, if you will. And I put that into it. So then when I go back, that goes into the fulcrum. But unless that information is pertinent to your mission or your job, they don't add that. They just put information of items on the cube. So is there any, like, crystals in there that look like that? I'm looking for the crystal. There we go. Now well, we're cooperating. All right. 
So I'm looking for crystals because that is an item. <laughs> uh, would I find a crystal of this type in the cube? The cube keeps up, has, it's basically if I cast the identify spell on it, it's in the cube. No, you would not find this in there. Right. So it's not a magical item. <sighs> Shit. All right. Well, I guess we'll just keep an eye out for weird goblins with stones sticking out of their heads. Jamie, is like it starts here and like comes back? Or is it just like in because you said jutting out of their head? Or is, like it, is it like a haircut? Its skull. Looks like, like it's like. Oh, oh, like a horn. horn. Yeah, kind of like. Wesley wants to touch okay. it, touch the gem. It's, it's a drawing. drawing. Oh, it's a drawing. Oh, I, my bad. He was sniffing. Done horses. by maybe like a first grader, it looks oh, yeah. like. Oh, okay. This drawing's not very good. It's not. Mm-mm. It sucks. Yeah. But who would just. Is this something that's walking around out there? Who just makes this up? Bugbears are imbeciles. Yeah. This has to be something they saw, right? I would think it is something they saw because there's no creativity there. Mm-mm. There's, there's morons. A lot of them. Hmm. Uh, how low on the wall is this drawing? It goes up to about his head height. Yeah. So either someone was holding a child that was drawing this. So or... it's either a goblin, but not an ogre who drew it. Maybe. Okay. Well, because an ogre, if he drew it, would be it would be higher than you, right? Well, the, the drawing is a lanky goblin. No, just it's not like a regular height-looking goblin. They drew this one extra tall for some reason. But you can definitely tell it is a goblin. Yes, yeah, probably. It looks Except pretty for the... much like it. it looks pretty good like a goblin. I, there are children in my town that drew better than this, and we only had rocks to draw with. Is the uh, crystal? When they drew it, showing any kind of like signs of emitting light, like little light or lines coming off of it. No, so it just looks like a crystal. It looks like some crystal. They made sure to at the top. It, it it looked more like a rock. It was rounded, or just they did something weird to it. But they just put it, and it looks like it has just a triangle point, and then comes back down. Is that the only drawing there? Just that one drawing? Just that one. Um, you entered it. You entered the drawing into the uh, thing. Yeah, I did. All right, I did. Well, we'll just keep an eye out for these freaks walking around in the woods. No problems. Yes, enter the data. <laughs> I was thinking we were always doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is me putting it into my queue. Um, if there's <laughs> nothing else of like interest, I'll I'll casually make my way back out. Where was everything, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Like, where was the drawing, and where was the chest? The drawing was uh, on the northern wall, actually near the entrance itself. Okay. Uh, the chest was in the most southern little claw scratched into the inside cavern there. Um, There's, like, scrap metal, scrap weapons, anything I can pick up to just take with me. Uh, the bugbears had morning stars. The ogre had a giant club. Um... I'm gonna, it's probably try y'all fought, right? I'm Spears. gonna have Bug kind of just like pick up anything useful, like metal and stuff, like take the spirit heads out and just put them into my uh, coat. Okay, get some scrap metal then. Yep, basically. Uh, how many pounds? Uh, for scrap, I'll say you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Just okay. say you have metal available Pick now. Up scrap. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of go out front and I'll just kind of keep watch. Okay, you head outside and. Um, Everything looks about the same as it uh, did before. You do see you're in the, you're reminded, you're in a lower recessed area, and everywhere around you kind of goes uphill a bit. This place was fairly difficult to find, you recall. We, like, looked at every point of interest in the cave. I don't see anything else worthwhile checking. Mm. Would a uh, bug be able to snip out anything that's unusual? If you want him to, what's he sniffing for? Anything that we didn't see, like anything that's buried, anything hidden in the walls or cracks. Have Bug make a perception check. Fifteen. Bug is his robot dog, by the way. Plus two. Oh, wait, is it? I think it's perception. 
the same as mine. Okay, so you uh, so seventeen incorporate incorporate your will into Bug, telling him to sniff around for just anything different from anything you've seen thus far. And uh, his head quickly turns to the corpses as you sniff and then shies away from him. Then uh, who's holding all those perfumes? Me. Uh, then back to Wesley real quick. And then uh, just sniffing around again. And after about maybe 15 seconds, he just stops and looks up at you, Wedge. Okay. Are these perfumes, like, nice smelling? Yeah, they smell really nice. They look like they were opened before, or they had some sort of seal. Like when I open a, like a high C juice box. Just a cork. Just a cork. <laughs> well, I guess I, um, Wesley's going to move over to Mr. Raven then. I don't really know why they would need this perfume. Um, can, you, can your dog maybe try to find out maybe there's someone hiding here? Through this perfume? Maybe they could track this scent? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Can I get Bug to like identify this scent? on the perfume and see if it's anywhere else. And he tracked us in. I suppose he could get you a head start on something if something else was wearing the perfume. Uh, but he sniffs it and then he just sits in front of you, staring at you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, It, lo it looks like these creatures may have, if they even examined it, maybe they hated the smell or didn't want anything to do with it and just lobbed it in there with the rest of the coin. So we're just gonna tell Wesley, hey man, I think they just stole it off of somebody, and they didn't. They just kept it for whatever reason. Hmm. Wesley's gonna keep that yeah, smell in mind, though, Jamie. Him. But when he when Wesley meets a new person, he's gonna go like, you know, do like see, yeah, yeah. see, see, see who's so, see who the perfume is for. Who's who's in cahoots? It is a it's a perfume, not a cologne. Yeah, right? it smells like a perfume. It smells like something a lady would wear. So oh. I'm like, hey. Sounds like some shit glass staff would wear. No, 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 no. <laughs> Give it as a gift to your um, lady friend back at uh, Mandolin. Oh. Okay. One at a time. One, Not all of them, just a little bit. I'll do that. Flynn, good idea? I'm outside. Yeah, he's going right. to keep watch outside. And I will not ask him that. <laughs> I retract my statement. My question. All right. I guess... Uh, I'll start walking towards the entrance if Mr. Raven then follows me. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to follow because there's nothing Okay, cool. left here. Uh, Tonk, what would you like to do? Oh, yeah. I'd like to follow everybody else outside. Okay, Tonk, you follow suit and head outside to meet Flynn and the rest of them. You need a throat, um, Loginson? I'm feeling great. Thank you. I look serious. I don't know so why that's the today. voice. You gave him a game of weird. <laughs> so you're all outside. You're all outside now. A um, little bit richer. You took that treasure and uh, the perfumes. And yeah, you're all just hanging outside with Arventura right now. now. All right. So back we to handled, Mandolin? No. We need to go tell uh, what's his nuts that we took care of the, <laughs> the bandit problem. The uh, red cloaked. The Thayan. Uh, Hunan. Thayan, yeah. Hunan. <laughs> it is Hunan. Hunan. Yeah. Hunani. He's a necro dude. Um, I suppose we can just follow our Wait, what, what, same path here. Yeah. What time is it, though? What time is it? Just so, because Wesley's feeling real bad. He wants to like make sure it's nighttime before he, he asks for a long rest. I don't quite remember. Y'all got here like early afternoon, did you not? I'm going to say it was early afternoon. So right now, I mean, it doesn't take three hours to do what you guys did. It's maybe been about 30 minutes, so... Still early afternoon. Mm -hmm. Is it cool if we kind of, you know, just rest up for a bit? I'm not feeling pretty good. Yeah, sure, I'm in no rush. Um, Maybe this cave is, we can use it to rest orcs. here. It was uh, orcs you guys beat the shit out of. Well, right. we could. Um, I, I assume that this is the only group that uses this, though. Like, there might be another group that is coming here. Like, maybe they, I know do shifts or something. That's true. Yeah, I'm not too comfortable staying here. I mean, we could go in the cave and you could put your little alarm thing. We could do that, but... Right at the entrance. That's only going to tell us... I mean, we're, at that point, we're trapped. How long would it take us to get back to the... Come on. 
Hamoon? Hamoon. 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 From where Can we make it to them before now? nightfall? I think it might take y'all a day unless you travel mm. during night. I mean, we don't have anything we're pressed for time about. No. <clears throat> Do you feel comfortable staying in here? We can yeah. just watch the entrance from the, um, from the trees. There's your map in front of you and on the TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, I s hmm. Can you what's, the, what's the weather looking like? Is it rainy or no? Uh, it has been drizzling uh, since you guys showed up at this place. It's still cloudy right now. It's still just like that, like, I can walk in this and probably don't need an umbrella type of rain. Could come harder at any second. No, I don't, I don't want to sleep in here. Um, I, I'm fine. I can go lay down in the, like, the tree line over there and then keep an eye if you want to stay in here. I'd rather be in the tree line than in here. Because if, whether it the alarm or not, you know. Maybe we can still put the alarm, that way we'll know if anybody comes in and goes. Ooh. I'm gonna need about an hour to do that. So we I don't have anywhere I need to be. All right, so I'm gonna take an hour and redo one of my just regular tinkering um, mechanical devices and bury, not like a trip wire, but like a pressure plate in the mouth of the cave, because it's only about 10 feet. Yeah. So that if anybody steps across it, it will sound the alarm. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. And I'll, I'll keep an eye out on the tree line just while he's doing that. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get Wesley to watch what I'm doing. And as I'm doing, uh, is like, tell him. Wesley was already starting to sit down, like, next to Flynn. He's like, oh, oh okay, Mr. Ravenson, I'll, I'll come. I'll come learn. <laughs> I get the shit smacked out of you, man. <laughs> of the only one. <laughs> I'm still All right, we're learning. We're learning. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have him sit down. But I'm just kind of talking to him while you're resting, what I'm doing and how all the connections work. And Are you wanting to use a short rest? It's going to have to be a short rest. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to use hit die at this time, then, if you want, okay. Wesley. You spend about an hour sitting there um, making this kind of, not an actual pressure plate, but I assume it's just like, I, I would describe the device you're burying. How's it make an alarm? Um, you what now? Wesley, sorry. No, you I, I click, thought you were... Click short rest oh. at the top of the oh, yeah. So, using yeah. some, uh, you know what, I'll open one of the dead bodies. Take your intestines out and sew it up, blow air through it, and bury that so that when people step on it, it pushes air to the sensor that sets off the alarm. Just like with those things that you run across in the road. Uh huh. Just like that. These artificers don't waste anything. The the rat corpses, intestines from creatures, they just. We're talking right now. Does that, that work? About, talking about my artificers. Oh, okay. They're just <laughs> hardcore. All right. You, you just create this. Fake pressure plate, and it's uh, right in the middle of this entrance, so unless something's hugging the wall, it's probably going to hit it. Yeah. It runs across the... Oh, it runs open. across. You're running out in the... Yeah, oh. the sensor itself. Okay. So, I mean, the intestines for days. Yeah, yeah. Am I right? right? Plenty of materials. I could, I could do the Plenty. whole... Plenty. Yeah, and you know what? Thank you. I will make sure it kind of serpentines uh -huh. a little bit so they don't have to step right on one. They can step, like, within a five-foot section. So 10 feet by five section, just... Good. They'll never notice it. Never notice it. <laughs> Wesley wants to. I'm gonna, you know, bury it a little bit, like dirty it up a little bit. Can I? Can I test the trap? You sure can. Can. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley just wants to do it like a little, like, like this, like. Ah! Oh, yeah, 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 it goes off. It goes off hardcore. Everyone hears it. It echoes in the forest. <laughs> I was gonna do it like this. I was, I was starting to. <laughs> Like that. That's what I wanted. <laughs> you spent an hour. You got that. It's all rigged up. It's good to go. There's no reason to touch it anymore. Flynn, you don't see anything approach <laughs> during that time period. Everything's okay. Uh, the rain, uh, the drizzle actually stopped completely. Hey. It's not dripping at all now. Good. Perfect. Just enough to wash some of the blood off of me. Yeah, just a little, a little clean. A little clean. All right. Well, Wes is going to head. Well, I would assume we're already in the tree line or is that the mouth? Yeah, you're at the mouth of this wyvern tour. Yeah, entrance. so. The alarm's good to go. We can find a more comfortable 
place. Yeah, well, um, well, if, if you got a decent rest, I got some there, rest. Then, and it's still daylight. We should head back to the owl well. Yeah, I got rest, but my rats are still tired. They won't be able to do anything for me until we take a decent rest. But I'm still good to go. Yeah, so, Tom. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm ready. All right. How far is the owl well? It's a good thing we built this alarm. <laughs> so I set the alarm up for nothing. Yeah, I thought I, I thought he was going to rest after he helped you. I rested uh, during. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's, I'm gonna cut the intestines off. And no, 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 Mr. Raven, that don't be funny. Okay, connect it back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna get the shit scared out of him, and we won't be around to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll probably stay out of that cave. True. There you go. So you guys end up? Yeah. Um, I'll try and follow the same way that we got here from the owl well back to the owl well. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a survival check. Let's see if you can follow that path. Twelve. Okay, that's good enough. You uh, try to recall the way that you got here, and you look around for maybe some broken sticks or some brushed leaves or some grass that got treaded on. And it's not that hard to find. Fortunately, it didn't rain super hard, so nothing's really messed up. And you follow this pathway back through this mountainous hill region until eventually you hit that tree line, and you can see the huge open plains that you've become very well acquainted with. <sighs> Taking a deep breath. Um... Uh, you are currently, just as a reminder, right here. Yeah, I'd like to try and navigate then from there back to the trail. Okay, no checks for that. Not too hard. You're just heading the opposite way of the trail, or the, uh, the for edge forest line. Um, takes about maybe uh, an hour, but you do find that lightly trodden dirt road of the Tribor Trail. All right, so we just have a couple miles on this. We veer off, head back into the the hills, and go tell Hamun his shit's been dealt with. Mr. Flynn, uh, earlier when you were talking to uh, Mr. Human, uh, you said fuck Zaztam, uh, but I don't remember meeting anyone named Zaztam. Who is Zaztam? Oh, uh, that was the the right piece of shit that we were talking about uh, last night. Um, kind of uh, nasty Thayan. Thirsty for power. Real piece of shit. Uh, beyond that, I don't know that much more about him, just that he's a huge asshole, right. and he's a problem. Very powerful. Okay, just another evil person that needs to die. That's... Yeah, so far probably. beyond our pay, <laughs> so far beyond our pay grade. Well, I mean, maybe ours. We saw what Tonk did to that ogre's legs. You might be able to stand a chance. Yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah, just um, I mean, it, it's one of those things. You hear dozens of stories, dozens of stories. You n never know what's true, what's not. Okay. Well, maybe we should start asking everyone if they like Zaz. We should not. Okay. Well then. We'll have to figure out if they're evil some other way. Right. Like if they take their carts back to the to the rack <laughs> after they're done shopping. Oh, I thought you were about to talk shit <laughs> <Yeah>. about us. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I'm going to interject and ask Flynn, is that how you feel about everybody who seeks out power? No. Uh, I believe too much power can corrupt, but... I don't think power in and of itself is a bad thing. Structure is good. How would you balance it? You had the power. Would you trust yourself with That's power? That's a pretty broad question. Of course I would. I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> you think yourself uncorruptible? No. Just I'm, awesome. I'm probably uncorruptible. You are not. If somebody shows you the right stone, you would flip in a heartbeat. I assume everyone would. Would you not? For, for the right stone. Well, that's the thing. 
How susceptible is one to corruption? Can you be bought off? How much gold is your honor worth? No one can buy me off. Well, that's literally what you said. That if I say, hey, go murder all of these kids and children and families, and I'll give you this really nice shiny rock. Well, I might do it. How sh- <laughs> Right. That's called corruption. I don't know if Talk would do that or not. <laughs> that why I... Actually, that's... <laughs> sounds... Like, what are you... <laughs> it just... How shiny does that rock need to be for you to put your morals to the side? What's your rock, Flynn? Very shiny. <laughs> Is it a rock? Is it gold? Is it your family? Mm. You guys walking while talking? About yes. Okay. Yeah. Walking, talking. I think you're, you're onto something. Everybody has a price, but where does that price become noble and where does it become corruptible? I don't know. That's a good question. Broad question. I suppose I haven't thought about it. Me either. But I wonder. Because I'm assuming you're right. We all have a price. What would my price be? A mm. price to kill a, a, a bunch of children? For no, a... it could be a, a many different things. It could be <laughs> something as small as going and lying to someone or as big as killing women and children. I'm just saying, there's a lot of areas in between. This is a very dense topic. I suppose we should. We've got nothing else to talk about. Let's, let's dive in. And I'll just, like, get super deep into, like, philosophy for the next however long. Yeah. We walk. Sure. And I'll reiterate, like, what we talked about the night before, about, like, okay, these rebels who the government did not approve of were actually just small-time farmers, you know, and they needed a voice and needed to be able to fight for themselves. So it's like, are they bad? Are they good? Are the people in charge bad, or are they good? You go back and forth on that topic. What label's good? What label's evil? At what point does it become evil? Is there a way to keep it good back and forth, right and wrong? Uh, Wesley, you are you just kind of listening to them go? Uh, Wesley's thinking right now, man, they're really smart. I don't really need to know this. I just, if I need to know if someone's evil, I'll just ask someone and they'll tell me. <laughs> so Wesley doesn't put too much in. And then he just starts like it. looking around because he's just, this is way, <laughs> how, wait, how interesting is this for a, for a. I don't think for you, I think that's why we hadn't like really asked your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one gives it. Okay. No, no, it's now that we don't care about now, your this opinion. This is a beautiful you dummy. day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like, I think, I think Wedge is afraid of your answer uh, because I don't think he thinks you know. Like uh, Wesley you, knows. Wesley knows. It's what, whoever, whatever, between good and evil? Yeah, whoever whoever we say is evil is evil. Or whoever tells him. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what Wedge is afraid of. Okay. So. Well, I mean, you decided to double-cross me down in the crypts for nothing but a wink and a smile. Oh, is this a conversation now? Yes. Well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Stone... I'm ready to have it <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stone Dong said we should, you were projecting... So we thought that maybe we should watch you. Right, right. So your honor to me was quite literally worthless. And then Wesley's just going to stare at Mr. Stone Donk because he doesn't know what to say now. Because he was ordered by Mr. Stone Donk. He's going to walk up and pat you on the shoulder, Wesley, and said, Wesley, you're a good boy. You're a sweet summer boy. Don't listen to that mean man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just and keep on walking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess we'll head back towards the, towards the owl well. You travel for hours. Un... <laughs> What's that roll for? Uninterrupted. <laughs> <laughs> there was so many dice in there. There's uh, a lot of zeros. <clears throat> Do you, uh, are you guys cutting through the crags or you stay on the trail and then making a direct cut? Um, I, I would follow whatever route we took to get to the woods, so, so cutting through the crags. So... Edermith had led you through these crags. This is a, kind of a shortcut you guys yeah. took. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys are heading through there, you make it about right here inside this hex until the sun is starting to set. Uh, it will be a, maybe three more hours to reach your destination. It will 100% be dark probably in about the next 30, though. What would you like to do? I don't think we're that far away. I mean, if we are 
careful. I mean, I believe we can all see fairly well in the dark. Yeah. And then we got Bug. Might take a little longer in the dark, but... Wesley, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Feel better? My rats still need... I need to keep them moist and, and more, more fed than usual. They're pretty tired, but... I won't mind if we just rest up at that really nice tent that Kian has. Mother rat? Give him water? Um, shit. I'm gonna check the rules on this one, Jamie. Uh, this is gonna be meta talk, talk on this one, but alchemy jug, mm-hmm. Jamie. Mm-hmm. Someone told me on one website that I, if I used all the liquids of a particular liquid, then only then I could switch to a different liquid. But then someone else said in mm-hmm. a different website, I could only choose one liquid per day. For the alchemy jug, one liquid per day. Okay. You pick your liquid. That's your liquid. You can produce up to its maximum amount. Then the jug chill chills or the rat. Until the next day. All right. Oh no, mother can't produce any more milk. It's, we already used it for um, for Stone Dong's ale. Oh, this is a good cause. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we're gonna set up camp. Is everybody good for that? Oh, I thought we were gonna uh, trudge through to. Oh, that's right. Yeah. If you're if you're all comfortable doing it, I'm good to go. All right, we press on. Okay, so you guys press on and the sun quickly sets and it becomes nighttime. It is quite dark. Uh, all of you do have dark vision, I think out to, is it 60 feet or 30 feet? 60. 60 feet, so 30, 30 well lit, 30 dim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so all you can see a, a decent chunk in front of you. And I'm going to have far. Bug kind of like run ahead of us, stop until we catch up, run ahead of us. Just to kind of keep a better eye on things. Okay. So uh, how far away is he going? 30 feet? Uh, yeah, 30 feet. And then he stops until we catch up in 30 feet. Just kind of an accordion type thing. Okay. So uh, he stays a little bit ahead to scout, just to make sure you don't bump into anything on accident, and then, you know, sooner than 60 feet out. Uh, and all of you continue trekking through the dark with no, we're not lighting torches or nothing. No. no light sources? Okay. No real need to. Wanted us to have light sources. All right. So you guys press on through the darkness. Yep. Uh, about three hours of travel go by till you start approaching that familiar hill leading up to the tower uh, that you met Hamoon at. And I think I still have that picture here somewhere. I do, right? As we get closer, I'm going to kind of tug on Flynn. I'm like, I think you should get his attention because you had a better rapport with him last time. <laughs> I think he's still mad at me and Wesley. Ugh. It is nighttime, so it's not this well lit, but there's your idea of it. Sure. Because I'm pretty sure his little uh, zombies aren't. We did not make lit. a strong first impression. No. But we um, did come up with an awesome move. True. True. Uh, all right. I suppose I'll uh, act as ambassador. Okay. So you're walking up the the hill, heading to like the gap in the wall up to the well. Mm-hmm. All right. Are you all falling right behind? Yep. yep. Where, where's Bug? Bug is still going to be either in step with whoever's at the front of the group. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Flynn, as you're making your way up, you see a light flickering from the uh, from up above. Uh, you're not there yet, but you see, you see clearly there's some light source that's bouncing off the ruined walls up ahead. And uh, when you make it to the top, you see there's a small campfire made in the middle of this area. And you see Hamun standing right behind it, as well as about nine other undead around him, completely in sync. Uh, when you go up there, do you just call? Are you doing anything? Are you just watching to see what he's doing? Are you calling out? What are you what doing? What do you mean in sync? Uh, I'll explain they... that depending on what he's about to do. Oh. Um, I, I'll. I'm going to continue walking. I'm not going to, like, call out, but I'm also not trying to conceal my presence. Okay. Uh, when you see Hamoon and all these undead, they're moving in motion. They seem to be just almost like they're doing some sort of yoga. They're maneuvers. doing yoga? Tai Chi? Completely in sync with each other. That's uh, pretty neat. Uh, I'll, at this point, then, I'll say... Um, we're getting some stretching in after a long day. Uh, 
Hamun will uh, immediately snap out of this uh, meditation he was doing. Go, ah, ah, ah. Is that... I can't see well in the dark. Can you come closer? I recognize your voice. Yeah, I'll keep... I'll keep walking. I, I would have never stopped. So I'm still just walking hey. up to uh, Hamun. Okay, you approach and he says, Ah, one of my previous attackers, yet now assistance, right? You, you've returned. Assistant is maybe not the right word. He snaps his fingers like this, and all of his undead start shambling around. Again, those are randomly. assistants. <laughs> well, those are my minions. Sure. Maybe, uh... Business work, partners. Work business partners, yes. We were hired to do a job. Um, the bandit problem. Oh, all of you, too. You're all alive. Very good. Wyventor. They're dead. Taken care of. You wouldn't happen to have brought any proof or something, right? What kind of proof? Tap Wesley and, like... I don't know, a head? Teeth? And a smell. Something showing you killed orcs? We have this. I'm going to just pull out three vials of perfume. Perfume? One of their, tr- you know, one of their treasures. We took it from them. All right, look. We, we <laughs> I'm going to found... put it right back feeling really <laughs> stupid. We found the cave uh, that they were hiding in. There were more than a couple bugbears. Uh, an ogre, which we were managed to take down. Uh, went into the little cave further. It was just shit. Everything was shit everywhere. It sucked. <laughs> um, but there was one chest in there, unlocked, of course. Dumbass is not even smart enough to lock the chest. Or trap it, even. Lazy fuckers. Uh, yeah, in there, some perfume, some silver. Um, we did find one thing uh, interesting, though. You seen any weird little fuckers walking around with uh, stones coming out of their head? Crystal-like horn? I haven't seen one with a crystal-like horn. Have you seen the the ones they have those crazy-looking skulls, though? I've not seen those. We've heard of those. So think a goblin head, but you grab the top of it, and suddenly it was made of clay, and you just whoa, and just pulled it back, and it was still alive and fine. We've he- we've heard a few people mention they've seen them. We've not seen them. Uh, the just regular shit goblins is what we've seen. Um, and then some drawing on the wall. Of, of a lanky this. goblin. It was lanky. Tall one, huh? A tall mm. goblin with a crystal-like horn. At what point does it not, because it's not a goblin anymore, though? Are there any tall, cre- like maybe a hobgoblin? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, we've got, unfortunately, uh, I, I would guess... No proof. He did disembowel one and uh, string its uh, insides around the outside of the cave. Oh, lovely. Very good. Yeah. Quite the decorator. And we left the alarm there. What you, you disemboweled it. You used, I'm guessing, it's in, uh, its intestines? Yes. As in arrows. That's a good idea. Hmm. And I will uh, take out my cube and show him, like, kind of... The setup of what I did. Oh, show him the show him the uh, picture, the cave oh. drawing too. We got that. And I show him in a little hologram of the picture. No, well, look at that. Child's drawing of an odd goblin with a crystal thing in its head. That seems he really did go there then. Good. So you dealt with my annoying invaders and Did you know about the drawing? No. But I'm assuming you showed me all this because you did it. You did do it. Yeah, we did do it, but you seemed very certain because of the drawing that we did it. Well, I'm assuming why would you show me that drum? Wait a second. I'm assuming you're just showing me that drawing because it was on the cavern walls or something? Yeah. Yeah. Do you not want me to believe you? Why no, are you acting so suspicious of him? Because acting suspicious of he us. He was very like, <laughs> like the drawing sealed it for him. And I was why just, wouldn't it? It was there. That's what we said. Yeah, but why would he, like, take that as the proof? Go sit down. I'm Go in the corner. Go over there. He was very... <laughs> he was on board like that as a drawing. It was just questionable. It's been a long day. Yes. Um, what's the, the... All the stretching and posing you were doing with your minions... Oh, another experiment. Uh, see how well I can control my minions with just my movements. Imagine instead of saying, hey, go over there, and then it goes over there, I simply go and have countless others act the same. 
You imagine how hard a punch like that would be, or a kick or a stab. I've been working on that for a good bit, and I'm getting pretty good. Yeah? Care to demonstrate anything you can show us? No. I'd actually like to go to bed fairly soon. <laughs> but right. I believe I promised you something. You did. What did I promise you? It's on the contract. It was gold, right? Just gold? No, you never specified it. No, he did think. specify. Yeah. Yeah. We could do a wall of fucking text right now. Of course, the one thing I didn't write down. Is it like 100 gold? No. You don't have that written down at all. Uh, no, I don't have it written down. <laughs> well, you have it written down in the game. <laughs> can, we do a, can we do a history check and read his contract that he signed? Absolutely. You can do a history check if you want to try to remember. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Right, or cool. can we just pull out the contract and read it? Yeah, that's the history check. You did write a contract, right? I did. Yeah. Oh, you did. Because he asked me to. Oh, well, you could easily pull that out. Just say you pull out the contract and read it. All right, I pull out the contract and read it. What does it say? You see that you were promised a ring of protection for doing this. Oh! That's why we do contracts in business. Very good lesson right there, Mr. Raven Dunn. Ah, see? Look at that. That's right. Sometimes getting people to sign something. <laughs> Not so bad. That parchment. Hey, I gotta give you... I gotta give you my ring. Very well. Oh, I promised I it. You did the deed. I don't put the contract up. Very well. I'm keeping it out for a second. You just hold it out? Okay. Yeah. He walks up to a couple of his zombies, and he, um, he looks like he's examining the chest of them, and then he goes up to the third one, and then uh, you see him do some sort of motion of, like, confirmation, and then he takes his finger and just sticks it inside between the ribs of one of it, piercing Ugh. through the flesh and digging around a bit. Until he gets two fingers and then three, and he's digging a bit more. And then finally he goes, oh, there. And then he pulls out uh, a few chunks of fat and flesh with it. But also a, a small ring with it. And then he turns around and says, ring of protection. Well hidden, too. Uh, who wants it? I hold out the contract, kind of put it. Are we in this tent? Or are we outside? Where are You're we outside. At? So I put it on the ground. I was like, just place it there, please. And the contract sets itself on fire and cleans the ring and... Oh. Good. That should um, help you with your further adventures. And now I won't be harassed anymore, and everyone's happy. I believe so. Unless there's more bandits, but we did kill quite a bit of them. Well, hopefully if you took out the Wyvern Tor encampment, there'll be no more for a while. I hear group after group tends to set up there, but they are got big old chunks of time between them. So, current one's dead. Next one, hopefully I won't be here anymore. So, all's well. Fair. Um... So, now that we're on a little bit uh, more even ground, understanding, we have a bit of trust built between us. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you didn't tell us about these other strange goblins that you've heard or seen? Any useful information you might share? I spotted one patrol maybe, I don't know, maybe like a week ago. Um, it was almost dark. Uh, they had glowing green eyes, I suppose. Does that help? That does help. Where was it? On the Tribal Trail. West of here, north, east. Right. Oh, far north, northwest. Like they just owned a thing, just walking right down it. Oh. Pity the the uh, traveler that was on the road at that time. Would you say it's east of Coneyberry? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And they were headed east. I imagine to knock up the next person they ran into with their whatever they used. They didn't... I, it was hard to see. I had to use magic to actually uh, kind of hone in on it. It was quite curious, but they uh, they had no weapons. So, hmm. very odd. Well, that definitely sounds like the fuckers were looking for, but I, I guess we head back to Phandalin from here. Yeah, we need to check in with uh, Darren... And this gal. Mm -hmm. Right, good. So, great doing business. I bid you all a good evening. Um, Stay safe. Yes. Speaking great the evening. Do you think it would be alright if we put up camp here with it being evening? We kind of marched through the darkness to make it here before it got too late. Mm, this is, I don't know, this is it's kind of crowded here already. As uh, you... 
And right now, this is currently my well. I suppose you're offering something to camp here? What makes no. it your well? I've set up here first. If you set up a camp and I walked in, would you not expect something? We're not looking to use any of your resources here. We have our own. We're just looking for a place that's not on a giant boulder. Is anything following you? Is there a chance of any danger whatsoever? If I have to spend more of my minions because these two burned a few already and then others were tracking you... Is anything ever certain? We were not followed to the best of my knowledge. And to that point, having us here better protects you and your minions. And not having us here. Hmm. We just want a place to close our eyes. We're all fucking tired. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Because the wedge is helping. Um, you said persuasion? Mm-hmm. 17. <sighs> I thought our business would be concluded by now. Now we're wanting to... Have sleepovers. I, I, fine, fine, fine. Take that corner. That corner there's yours. Do with it what you will. In the morning you go, yes, and then we're, we're bygones we're, be bygones. We're out of, out of your robes. Yes. I'd hope, yes. I'm going to pull out a cigar and kind of hold it up like, do you mind? <laughs> so I light it and then offer him one as well. And Tonks one. No, no, I don't smoke. Okay. All right. I'm. I'll go over to where he kind of motioned, and I'll. Uh, I'll follow suit. Follow. Yeah. I'll grab out my sleeping pack. He claps his hands twice, and uh, two zombies walk up to the little campfire he made, and they just start kind of shoveling the stuff to separate it out and kind of help put it out, and he heads into his tent. Cool. So I'm gonna hold up the ring and say, "Need to talk about this." Do you guys know what a ring protection does? No clue. And then I will put it down. I was like, this is what the cube is for. <laughs> and I look up ring of protection, and it basically adds one, plus one uh, bonus to your AC and saving throws while wearing the ring. That's mm-hmm. great. It uh, requires attunement. Hmm. So, we have to first thought is, I think if you had it tonight, you'd be nice and comfortable with it tomorrow morning. So either you, because I think you have the lowest AC, or me or Tonks, because we're always um, seem somehow seem. I say something. whoever's cleaved something in two should probably get the ring. Yeah, so we just all that's hard to argue. See who's cut something in half, and then we we make a choice. Well, what does that have to do with protection? Yeah, well, and yet you haven't needed it so far. Are you? I don't know what all this is. I'm just talking about cutting stuff in half. What are you talking about? And you're so great at it. I am. You know what else you're great at? Everything. Rubbing stones. I love stones. And he you, know what you're, you, don't, <laughs> you know what you don't find yourself doing? Lying on the floor in a bloody mess. The three of us, it happens. Yeah, I don't know why you do that. <laughs> so Sometimes you, see you just our get point? really tired in yeah, the yeah. middle of battle. It, takes, it, it drains us a little bit more than you. Um... I mean, what? how thick is your armor? Why don't we just figure it out when we get back to town? One of those things we do it now, we don't have to worry about it later. Well, I don't know. I just might feel different about it when we get back to town. <laughs> I feel like I'm, gonna, I'm not myself right now. I'm going to take off my jacket, <laughs> and then, <laughs> boom! <laughs> Here's the keg. Oh, that was good. Oh, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's fine. All he right. takes the keg, and he starts drinking. Right, so, uh... He's taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> Three of us talk. Baby has his bottle. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, he doesn't really need it, does he? I, I mean, he may. Look, Part it's a ring of yes, I feel like there. any of us could use it. Yes. Um, how, how many times have you bled out on the ground? Uh, a, couple. a couple. I've bled out a couple times. You Me as well, yeah. As well, yeah. Maybe we just. We draw straws for it. I'm down draw straws. D4? What do you think? D4s? What's a straw? Tonks are drinking right now. This is y'all. No, oh, DM. DM. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want me to tell you what to roll? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say roll a D20. Okay. Different, bigger numbers and stuff. Am I rolling for Tonk? Do you want him in? Uh, he's like drinking. He's, he's drinking. Yeah. So if, he's if all he on his own? If he, heard, if he heard it, he can roll. I mean, he's drinking. Nothing else matters right okay. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Uh, 12. 
Nine. Thirteen. So you, you draw you draw the. Uh, I guess my straw is yeah. thicker than all your straw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Longer. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so yeah, I give you the ring of protection. All right. What is that? What do I do down, Jimmy? Yeah. Go yay. to your inventory and. Uh, click manage items and then search for ring of protection and then just add it to your inventory and then left click the little box so it'll apply to your stat sheet that gives him an AC of 16 then what is your, your AC is like 14 right? oh shit you should have got it you sure you don't want it's it fun. Mr. Flynn I'm, I'm generally kind of hanging out in the back okay. yeah, somehow you find yourself on the front line even though you're <laughs> I, just, I just feel that Mr. Stone Dog might need help He's out there by himself, swinging, swinging his stone dogs. No, and I mean, if we on. find ourselves in a situation, I mean, we can. We can always. It's not glued to your finger. Okay. True. Stone dog brings that keg back to your wedge after downing six ales. He's like, ah, "That should be enough here. Do the uh, hold the open your stretch hole." Tonight or in the morning? <laughs> well, I don't want anyone taking it. I'm gonna put it up. All right. Take off my jacket and wait for him to put it in. He puts it in. And I'll grab my sleeping bag and uh, I'll pull out the uh, bottle of whiskey and refill my flask. Where's the bottle of whiskey? In your stretch hole. Oh, shit. Just when did it get in there? Jamie, can you, you want to tell uh, me when to tune it? When we were in town? How to tune it? Okay. Or when? Uh, yeah, I mean, throughout the night you'll be able to attune it. So you can, you can add it. But right after you attune it, nothing happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing special with that. Extra special with that. Right so uh, I guess we're all getting ready to... Lay down for the night. Sounds like it. So I'm gonna make my rounds, uh, kind of look at Wesley's clothing, and see if it needs any mending. Go to you, see if you have anything that needs to be looked after. Yeah, Wesley got bashed and cut a bunch, I believe, last time. Yeah, and I got critical headed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna go into like full on dad mode and just like kind of awkwardly undress him. Like, give me this. Take off his shirt so okay, I can. Mr. Re Wesley looks like he's used to not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, by now you should be. Because it's not the first time that I'm just like, okay, let me, I'm going to go sew it up real quick. All right, Wesley's going to. Uh, Do you have anything that you need I'm, done? I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty put together. Uh, you want me to uh, wax up your loot or put some more, like, oil on the wood? Um, no, I should be fine. Okay. Appreciate it. So I'm going to go sit on a stump and sew up the holes in his clothes. Mm. You spend a few hours repairing his stuff. Uh, pretty, pretty repaired up. Yep. And then after that, take out a couple of sheets of paper, start jotting stuff down. Are we doing anything else before we actually try to start sleeping? Are we doing some watching stuff? Or are we just... I'm going to set Bugbear to task on that. Okay. And let him know, hey, same rules as before. Don't let anything get close that I would find dangerous and then have him kind of circle around us. Okay. All right. Wesley settling down. Flynn settling down. Yep. yep. All right. You guys get cozy, fix up Wesley's clothes, and start sleeping for the evening in the comfort of Hamoon and his undead army. Uh, nothing happens throughout the night. You can all get a long rest. Hey. Until daylight. Long rest. Long, long rest. So. Ooh. Hmm? It just looks a little bit it? different. Yeah, never mind. I'm just so used to night now. So, yeah, you got long rest happens. Morning starts to come, and you all start to awaken. Hey. Awaken, awaken, awaken. As you awaken, I need you to subtract a ration if you plan on eating this morning, if you want to avoid Ooh. your exhaustion. I will need to ration. Ration. Um, and uh, the alchemy jug, it is, um, it does say once it starts to produce a liquid, it can't produce a different one or more of the one that has reached capacity, its capacity until the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it doesn't say it can't produce a different liquid, right? It's that chosen liquid. It says it can't produce a different one. Yeah. Okay. What's the point of all the nipples then? One nipple a day. All right. It's like, think of it like uh Unless you do another one. You can have two. 
I could have two, that's right. Like the soda fountain at like an old Jack Pirtles or something, and maybe like only one thing works at a time. Like two people can't go up and get two different drinks. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while, while we're eating our rations, Jamie, I, I think um, I think Wesley's gonna like take old Fatty out because Fatty took like a bunch of damage. He did throw up his stomach at one point to did. block a spear mm-hmm. coming right for your chest. So just like, all right, like in the middle of camp, um, Wesley's gonna take Fatty out, and Fatty's just gonna go like this. Like, are you okay, Fatty? And Fatty's just not gonna do anything. Like, Here, eat, eat this, Fatty. And Fatty's just, he's gonna hold, put something on the floor. Uh, Fatty's gonna throw up his stomach lining on that, just grab it, and then it goes right back. Like, just stomach. suctions in, in yeah. the stomach cartilage, whatever the fuck it is. And, just... and then I'm gonna also take out, um, like a little, like a little dripper, and just start keeping him moist. Like of water, just it looks like a little. Um, if you'll let me have it, yeah, it's fine. It's like a little miniature turkey baster. Okay, but it keeps them moist. You moisten fatty, so he's nice and comfy. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna wait around until someone tells me it's time to leave. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk to because when we were in his tent, we saw a bunch of books in Human's tent. There are a few books in there. Uh, I'm gonna see if he won't let me like peruse some of the books. Just look at them. <laughs> okay, well, how do you do that? I'm going to, like, kind of, hello, on his tent. Because are we, are we on the outside of this tent, right? And yeah, kind of like, his tent, yeah. It's, it, looks, it looks closed or pulled to, not closed. So I'm so. going to kind of try to make myself known and ask if I can enter his tent. All right. As soon as you're outside his tent and said hello, his hands are already pulling out, popping it open like he was on the way out. Anyhow, so jump back a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Good Good morning. You, you too. You're, you're here. Yes. Hey, hello. here. I saw, I mean, we're getting... Ready to pack up and everything. But I saw you had some books. I was wondering if I couldn't just read a couple pages of something interesting. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? You, because I don't know why you're still here. I thought you, you good morning. I'm glad oh, you had a nice rest in my camp. You can, it's the time to go. Everybody's yes. eating now, and I would like something to do while everybody's getting up. Because I think Tonks is still asleep. No! You, you said you're a scholar, <laughs> right? I am. And I, I'm a scholar as well. When two scholars meet, shouldn't we trade knowledge? Where I'm from, scholars don't really work together. In fact, they try to kill one another when they're not looking. So no, I'm not too <laughs> keen on the idea of sharing my knowledge with a scholar. Great point. But we are not where you come from. Let's try something new. Like, you were pretty impressed that we didn't just go all crazy on you and try to burn you up, right? This is a new experience. I was not impressed by that at all. You destroyed two of my zombies. Maybe more. Actually, a lot more, I think. Nope, only two. And we we discussed that. You should have had signs. Friendly zombies. I've never seen a zombie. Let's be honest. Call us off guard. I have seen books. And I'm assuming you have stuff in your books that are different from what I've seen in my books. I'm just like off to the side, like leaned up against like a rock or if there's any kind of stone or remnant of a stone building or something. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like sitting on it. I'm just taking it in. Make a persuasion check. It's fairly difficult. I think a two? Ooh. Oh. 15 plus what? 15 plus two. So it's 17. 17. That's a lot of numbers. He takes a deep breath and says, Look, I really just want to get back to my research. I don't want to share my resources with you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm maybe in another life, maybe at a different time, but no, I'm not. I'm not interested in sharing what I have for now. And then I'm like, that's fine. And I take the brooch, my little dragonfly brooch off, and click it and make it make a flame. I just back away and I'm like, Shared stuff. Just, is that a like threat? An is he threatening? Is he threatening? Are you? I don't know. No, I'm showing you how it works. I'm not, it's not a threat. <laughs> Why are you sparking at me? I could have touched it and <laughs> make fire. And I put it back and fuck off. <laughs> and he goes back inside his tent. Uh, as he's like going in, I'll just say thank you for everything. Great yes. day. Thank you. Thank you. You ever find yourself near Fandolin for one reason or another? You can look us up. And I know he's not going to say anything back. So I turn and 
I'll start just start to walk back um to the trail? Or no, we're here? Yeah. I so don't back I, to the crags? Yeah, I have no interest in going back through Coneyberry. That place is freaky as hell. Yeah, I just want to get back on the trail and head toward Phandalin. So it says you talks. It'll take about three days to get back to Phandalin before you guys are at right now. Uh, so, yeah, you'll make it to the Tribor Trail. You'll make it deep down the Tribor Trail. And then you'll... Oh, well, no, I guess on the you'll make it back on the third day. No, I take that back. So, and that's if you guys are just heading out in the morning and not making any more pit stops. So what is the goal of today? Travel, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and but I'll... Um, similarly to when we were headed to Coneyberry originally, I want to keep an eye on the side of the road for, like... But like it, footprints, goblin footprints, going in t- towards the woods. Sure. Okay. Uh, Tonk is up. He used a ration as well, and he's uh, in line now to follow what you guys are doing. Same-sy. So you guys are heading through the crags back to the Tribor Trail, the mm-hmm. way Edermeth led you. Yeah. Very well. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of fast traveling, unless there's something in the evening one of you want to do besides what you've already told me. So. I'd be sticking pretty similar routine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that case, well, I guess I, no, hold on, I gotta. <coughs> Owl bear. Okay, you guys head out from the old owl well, one ring of protection richer, yeah. and uh, make your way back towards the Triber Trail. Are uh, you wearing it now? Yeah. You have yeah. no issues traveling. Do we need to go ahead and subtract the three rations? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, for for good reason. So, Uh-oh. you make it to the Triber Trail. It's late evening again. You settle down for camp. Do your usual spiel and routine. It gets dark. Uh, you set, I'm going to assume you set up your alarm and the bugs walking around. No issues. Morning comes. Go ahead and subtract one ration. And you continue your travel. Ration and subtract. As you are traveling down the Tribor Trail now, um, you haven't cr- come across anyone thus far. No creatures or whatnot. Flynn, go ahead and make a perception check. Um, s- trees are sparse, far and few between now. There's one or two on the side of the road occasionally, but it's mostly wide open fields with medium to tall grass around you. 22. Whoa! <laughs> Flynn, you don't see any uh, any footprints on the side it, of the trail you got mimicking it. maybe goblin prints or even boot prints. At this point, it looks uh, fairly untraveled at the moment. Okay. Abs- absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Though. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wesley, no. Is the music duplicated? That was uh-huh. just sounds kind of weird. Oh shit! Is that me? Oh no, it's not. Definitely. It is difficult. What yeah. in the world? Hold on, I gotta fix that. That was throwing. My- I heard that suddenly. I was like, "What the hell?" I thought I left my YouTube music on for a second. It sounded completely normal to me. <laughs> I could, I mean, I'm no, sure the stream is on company. <laughs> so, you're traveling again, Tribor Trail, still moving down it. Um, subtract, uh, you guys already subtracted one ration. This yep. is day two. Yeah. So, about. Oh, Kim says, OMG, it is on our side too. No, not anymore. So, five hours of travel. It's just oh, in the OMG. afternoon now. Um, you're coming over a light hill on the Triber Trail, and it's continuing to wind down. But uh, right when you come over that hill, uh, you all finally notice something, other than like a random deer or squirrel, then you know, just wilderness crap. Uh, there's a tree, maybe about ten feet off the road, and uh, you see someone just sitting under it. Someone small, looks like maybe a gnome. You have a cousin out here? <laughs> we don't all know each other. It's fairly in the distance. Was it? What does he look like? Maybe like three hundred. Like, are we walking toward them? Uh, you would have to pass by them. You stand okay. on the trail. So I guess you just, yeah. you're just I, sitting there doing nothing. Do you want me to take she the lead on this one? Oh, she's yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll kind of walk toward that person. Oh, what you looking at? Okay. I'll sh- shorten my my uh, stride so that I can stay in pace with him. Oh. I'm gonna make Bug small, so he's now puppy mode. Okay. 
So, uh, bucket's small, but it looks a bit more presentable as you guys continue on the Tribal Trail, yeah. inevitably approaching the path that this gnome is just sitting off the side on. Uh, you get about a uh, hundred feet out, and uh, you can start making out more features of this person as well as hear music. Um, the gnome seems to be sitting there playing uh, a lute, just kind of uh, slowly swaying back and forth, like she's uh, at peace, just enjoying herself. Kind of look up at uh, Flynn. Like, sounds like she's talking your language. Is it? Is the melody they're playing? Is it something I would recognize? It is. It is something you absolutely recognize. Uh, you get an idea real quick uh, in something... your head, Flynn, that this seems, this feels very, very, very familiar. Um, Do the rest of us recognize it, or is it? No. Okay. It's nice, is it a pleasant tune? It is very pleasant. You get a little bit closer and um, see that there seems to be a little white frog sitting in front of her as well. Now, Flynn, you are incredibly familiar with this at now. You know who this is at this point. During your time at the Bard's College, someone had trained you up to be able to do what you can do, and this person seems to be just sitting here in front of this tree right now. You remember her name to be Eliwick Tumblestrum, and you remember her to be an eccentric, wild, sometimes confusing little character. How do you spell um, that? Yes, yeah, spell that very slowly. E-L-L-Y W-I-C-K T-U-M-B-L-E S-T-R-U-M. We still on first name? First try. Do what now? I missed it on I didn't I wasn't that good. Ellie with Tumblestrum. Tum, Tumblestrum. I don't know why I'm using all caps. You're about sixty feet out now and she has her eyes closed and she's just playing and swaying as if not a care in the world, yeah. no danger in the universe. I'll pull my loot out after recognizing them and I'll start playing like not the exact same thing, but like an accompanying part to it. Okay, make a make a performance check. Let's see how let's see how well you've retained those skills. Um, since I know the song, would it be with advantage? Yeah, I said you were very familiar with it, so sure. I think we're gonna be all right. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, it fits right in with what she's playing. Like you just just hitting those proper sounds, the highs and the lows when the she's going to it. It sounds, that, yeah. sounds if there were people around right now, they'd probably be tipping it sounds so good. As uh, you guys start to eventually make it on the path to where you completely interject with where she's sitting. And uh, you can now see this is what she looks like. Well, I'll be damned. And her eyes are still closed as she's playing and she stops for a moment. If you said, well, I'll be damned. and says, Flynn, Flynn, Flynn. I taught you well. How you doing? Eliwick. Um, well, I'm doing all right. Uh, hello. This is, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a little confused to, to just find you out here. Um, is she still playing while she's talking? Nope. Trail. She said her little side. I, I'm being rude. Uh, these are my traveling companions. Wedge and, and Wesley. my business, uh, oh. And yeah. talk, right? I look at Tom. <laughs> Stupid song. Uh, uh, yes. I look very concerning at Flynn. Like, uh, how does she know who we are? For a second. Ellie, what are you doing out here? It's great to see you. Well, to be frank, I came to check up on you. Well, all of you, I guess, technically, but mainly you. Uh, just to see how we're doing? Yeah. Okay, well, we're doing fucking great. Um, we just made some money. Um, we got into some some scuffles with some ne'er do wells, and um, we're making this adventuring thing uh, a proper fucking job. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, have you? Uh, how should I ask this? I never know how to ask these things. I'll just um, spit it out. Have you found anything weird? How much fucking time do you have? Everything out here is weird. Well, none in a lot. Fair. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I just stared. That seemed like a pointed question. How do you know who the rest of us are? Well, I was told who you were. By whom? Ooh, people I can't say quite yet, but soon. 
this is her thing. This is how she communicates. It's Ellie Wick and I go quite a bit back. Uh, one could say a mentor of sorts. Oh, that's probably why Mr. Flynn plays so well, is because you taught him. I think it's his own personal skills that did most of it. I just showed him oh. a few tricks. Hmm. Can I kind of gesture toward her loot, like for permission to pick it up? I uh, so like you ask and like motion to yourself. Or yeah, yeah like kind of like, can I? Oh, and she grabs it and literally just lobs it to you. Oh wow! <laughs> so I catch it and I just start looking it over and trying to compare it to Flynn's loot. Would Ellie be the same one that also that I met in my village? Um, or did I meet her once I got into Bard's College? I would say you were introduced to her once you got to the Bard's College. Okay. Um, I haven't seen you for some time. How is it? How are you? I'm actually doing pretty good. Um, got kind of weird in the Feywilds for a little bit, but besides that, so far good. What were you doing in the fucking Feywilds? Hmm. Uh. You can tell me. Yeah, I guess. But you can't ask questions. You promise not to ask questions if I tell you? We both know I'm going to tell you, yes. Well, okay, fair enough. Um, stopping multiple universes from collapsing on each other. Wow. Well, not so, so me so much. It's more, well, I guess I had a, bit, a little bit of hand of it. Not hanging out in the classroom quite as much lately then, huh? No, oh, no, I couldn't at that point. Hmm. Uh, does that have anything to do with why you are here? Yes, actually. And she stands up and just kind of Fuck. rubs her knees a little bit and says, Um, have you heard word of something about some weird goblins, any of you? It's all anyone's talking about. It's the, it's the rage. Oh, good. You found some? We found a drawing, and we heard of uh, weird fucked up goblin patrols, but we have not seen them yet. When you say weird goblins... You describe them. You know, goblins, they have just those round heads, but these ones are like, you just take their head and you just, boom, you just, <laughs> pop, you like just, clay. Like it was clay? That's a good what? analogy. Oh, thank you. We've, I haven't seen <laughs> any. But what about heard. goblins with stones or crystals sticking out of their head? Like a horn. Well, it would depend on the crystal, I guess. Hmm. Okay. I'm waiting for Flynn. Oh, okay. I kind of like shake you off. That sounds like something they do, too. You found a really magic crystal and they don't know how to use it, so they just... Boop, and they just, oh, that's how it, it's either kills them or it works, right? So maybe uh, something like that. True. Uh, he's got the picture. And I bring it up and kind of show her the cube with the hologram coming out of it. She, uh, as you pull out the cube and pull up the hologram, you notice her eyes are still fixated on the cube itself. And she says, I've seen something like this before. Are you, she looks up at you again and goes, oh, you're one of, you're one of them. Oh, F uh, full, full, fulcrum, full, full, fulcrum. Yes. I am a representative of the folk room. And he's as mad as a wax banana. And I pull out a card and <laughs> like, here you go. Thank you. And she takes it and immediately puts it in her pocket after examining it. And then uh, she says, that that tech is uh, marvelous. Very handy stuff. But I suppose uh, that's, uh, do you mind? I give it to her. And she looks over at the uh, the drawing. It looks like a child drew this. I guess that's expected. But it was at least five feet tall. The drawing itself. Hmm. Have you seen a drawing like that before? Can't or... say I have. And she lobs it back to you. Catch it. And I see you've brought your pet with you. Oh, Toady. Yes, Toady. I, whenever I'm out, I like to bring him with me. It's like a little good luck charm. And the frog's just looking up at you. Just. <laughs> do I? Do I? Do I remember you've seen Toadie? this around okay. the college. Uh, I'll go up to Toady and like lean down and try and give him a couple little scritches under his chin. And, he, and immediately Toadie just <laughs> and just lets it happen. Yes. And I'm gonna let tell Bug to like sniff at it, like, sniff its butt. Yeah, he sniffs his butt. Yeah. Just nothing. No Toadie reaction. Just, just as long as he's being scratched, he's just. Oh, okay. That's a funny frog. <laughs> um. So, all right. Uh. Weird clay-headed uh, goblins, some with stones sticking out of their hands, uh, worlds collapsing in on each other. Oh, that was a different thing. I don't all know if this is related. All of this, I don't think it's related. All of this brings you here. Why? 
Not that I'm not glad to see you. It, you must admit it's a little unusual to just stump two people that know each other from way across the world, just running into them on probably one of the least traveled trails in the entire Sword Coast. Everyone always says that. I get that a lot. You travel on this trail a lot? No, not this trail. Why? It's very odd, you being here right now. Oh, it's because I knew time. you'd be here. How did you know we would be here? Oh, I can't tell you that. It would mess things up. I wish I could. I really do. For us or for you? For everyone. All right. Um, it's a little odd, but I'll humor it. What? What can we do? What can the Sword Coast Barbers yeah. offer the Great Eluic? So the name matter. Well, at this point, I'd say, I guess just keep doing what you're doing, because everything's as it's supposed to be at the moment. Just, I really didn't know if you had ran into those things yet or not. Or where they are, actually. Or why they're here. Or how they got here. Or when they got here. Can I do an inside check on Flynn to see if he's, like, put off by this person? Yeah, absolutely. I, while he's looking, I would like to make, I don't know if it would be what check it would be, but I want to see, like, does, does Ellie have the same, like, general demeanor or, like, same look that I would have remembered, or does she look different from, like, when the, when the last time I would have seen her? Make an inside check. Inside. And I can do my inside check, too? Sure. 14 plus 4, 18. Uh, so I feel like he's 14. Getting... We'll start with Flynn first. Okay. Flynn, her demeanor, what she's doing right now, seems to... It doesn't seem too far-fetched from her normal behavior. She always acted like she always knew what was happening or going to happen before it even did. Like, that was almost a normal thing with her. And you recall, in most cases, she was correct about a lot of the stuff she told you. And normally it was just small things, like... You know, maybe someone's going to trip over something tomorrow, and she would say, oh, I hope his foot's going to be okay, and you don't know what she's even talking about. Later, someone sprang their ankle or something. Things like that. Um, <clears throat> I'll just assume that this is another one of those scenarios as to why you were so good at the casino every time we went. So what do we need to do? Or just, just keep being us? I would say, for now, just... Keep doing what you're doing. I can't influence your decisions, unfortunately, but, uh... Of course not. That'd be ridiculous. It would be very ridiculous. And it might it might cause, uh, issues. So, I guess... Yeah, keep it up. I'll be around. But, uh... Would you hmm. like to accompany us back to Fandolin? No, no, no. I'm not supposed to. Then why are you here? To check up on him. And you. You could have done that without us ever being aware of your presence. So by but coming here... to say hi. Yeah, but now we know something is... Well, we knew some freak shit was happening regardless. But now we know there's some freak <laughs> shit happening. Yeah, but now we know that freak shit is more important than just... somebody in somebody else's backyard. It's, it's bigger than that. Sure. So did you break... Yeah, so why, why, why us? Uh, aren't there more capable adventurers? Stronger? Probably. But they're not the right ones. They're not the ones that are... supposed to. They're the wrong ones. All right. You're well, supposed fuck. to find Gundren. Right? Um, Who we're looking for. That's, yep. In a roundabout way, I mean... He owes us ten gold. No, we already got paid. That's probably he doesn't know why. That. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> the contract has been fulfilled. He also doesn't know that. Wait, does he know that? I don't know. The one thing, <laughs> she, the she, one she, thing she doesn't know. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're looking for Gundren. Uh, he was supposed to meet us in Fandolin, wasn't there. We started hearing about the weird goblins, then picked up some side gigs. Met some interesting people. Now we're here. I see. Well, 
I guess that was all supposed to happen. Yeah. You're supposed to find Gundren, but you did those things. That means those things are supposed to happen because nothing else has happened yet. So... Yes! You're doing great! Everything's honky fucking dory! It's fantastic! Wonderful. Uh, any new uh, musical bits that you've learned in the Feywilds? Are they paying attention to me at all? Uh, it looks like they're talking oh, to Eliwick right now. Gonna... Wesley's just focused on her. <laughs> I'm gonna just test like... something mm -hmm. and pick up a small stone and throw it at her. Oh, why would you do that? Oh, you would. Okay. Uh, I, I, gotta, I'm scared I have now. a theory. That was supposed to happen. It. Make an attack roll. Oh. I'm not trying to, like, hurt her. I'm just trying to, like, toss it at her. Oh, I see. 15 plus. Be like your dex if you're throwing something. Is it a 19? Plus two. No, it's not. 17. Okay. You pick up a stone and lob it at her. She's smiling and, and nodding towards Flynn, and she goes, and a stone goes right past her head. She goes, why are you throwing rocks? Don't do that. I was testing a theory. And then I quickly throw another one. Make another attack roll. I If I see him going to Damn do it. that, I, I want to try seven. and like... <laughs> to seven. A seven? So yeah, he could totally... She just stands there and the rock goes... <laughs> she didn't need to move that time. Would you, why are you still fucking rocks? stop? This is my friend. I, I, I understand that. I, I have questions. And I'm testing something. What are you testing? Trust the process. I absolutely do. I trust her process. I don't what trust is, your process. What is that? And I throw another rock at her. <laughs> Make another attack roll. Was she, was I she try supposed and block to throw it. the rock at you? It's a four. <laughs> Damn it. No. It just goes into, she hears rustling in a tree and looks up. Is that a bird? All right, I'm done. I'm done. Are we all right? We are. We get it out of our system? Yes. I did learn a few Feywild songs if you wanted to hear one. But they be warned, they can cause side effects. Like good ones? Well, they're harmless. You wanna hear? Yeah, fuck it. Let's she, go. She looks so. towards you for her loot and nods and holds her hand out. Oh yeah, I forgot you had it. Toss it the way she tossed it at me. She grabs it out of the air. And uh starts playing this whimsical tune that sounds like it's from another realm. Make a wisdom save for all of you. Uh-oh. You need a fifteen no. It is a seventeen. Oh, can you can you see my modifiers for wisdom? Your laptop die? It's dying. Oh no. I, I nine. Failed. Oh, I got a nine as well. <laughs> so what did I glean from my inside check on Flynn? Because I was checking to see if I got thirteen. He's put off by her. Oh, that's right. Flynn. Or like he feels uncomfortable. What'd you roll? Uh, eighteen. Is that what I rolled? Yeah. Okay. Would you, uh, he, with an 18, how does Flynn uh, feel about uh, how Yeah, you, you would say I don't look defensive or put off. Or you're not questioning like why she's here. Mm -hmm. You're just happy to see her. Thanks, okay. Mm -hmm. But we all failed this wisdom roll. Um, all right. And just after a few seconds, we start playing. All of you start, you just start tapping your foot. And then you start wiggling your body. And then you just start dancing. Well, this is right down my alley. Just dancing. You can't, you, you're like, you're looking at your body. It's like you're not even controlling it right now. You just can't help but dance to this. I feel the music. Holy shit, this is a great song. <laughs> she plays for about 30 seconds. And then there's one final -da -da strum. And then y'all, you stop. I want to start, I want to do like the techno Viking dance. Just, I don't forget how it goes. Yeah, yeah it's a like hard, hard, hard juice. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, she stops and says, <laughs> Our producer has come in the room. Feywild music tends to have um, bonuses to it. Like, for instance, it looks like all of you couldn't help but dance to that. I have other ones that do a lot more not good side effects, but I'm going to play those. Where, uh, where does one learn those kind of songs? In the Feywilds. Do you not have, like, a sheet of music? No. Would you be able to write that music down? After hearing it? I don't happens. even know what some of those notes were. <laughs> Some of them sound like three notes at once. How did you do that? Magic. You could teach me. Actually, yes, I could with time. How much time? I suppose you're not spending much time for the foreseeable future back in the classroom then. No, no, in fact, about one minute from now, I have to go. Is it one, she looks, looks like she's looking towards the sun. 
Uh, it might be two minutes, but I'm gonna do one minute to be safe. You're going to do some some magic shit, yeah? No, I'm gonna go. What does that? So you're just gonna go? Yeah. Like walk off that way? No. So Ooh. magic shit. Yeah. Can you take us? I only have about 40 seconds left. Do you really don't want to... Do you have anything else to ask? Oh, fuck. You, and no, I definitely can't take you. You have to be here. You're supposed to be here. Actually, I think you're supposed to be in Vandalin, but you're here Can you right take now. us to Vandalin? That's fine. I guess. I don't see... I don't see why that'd be a problem. Do you want me to take you to Vandalin? That would be fucking great. You're awesome. Sure. Right now? Let's go. You've only got 30 seconds. Oh, that's true. We gotta go right now. And she turns around, you no, know, walks beside this tree, and holds her loot, and just does a quick three notes, just do, just just two random notes, do do do, or whatever. And uh, as soon as she does, you see a line <laughs> form all the way to the ground right in front of her, about uh, about Flynn's height. And literally, it's like space time itself just <laughs> opens up, and she just walks through. I'm gonna run through the thing quick, and be like, Wee! <laughs> I'll look to uh, Wesley and say. That's why you don't fuck with Mrs. Tumblestrum. Uh, I won't do that then. Yep. <laughs> Just keep walking, I guess. Tom, come on. This is weird. And he walks through as well. Yep, we'll go through. Yeah, we need to go to that school. And uh, once you walk through, she's already standing on uh, on the other side of this. As you walk through, I mean, you saw nothing but just weird colorations of bright purples and white light just on this, this rift she opened up. But when you go through... You could see you're about maybe 200 feet out from Fandolin on the, one of the outside walls. And as soon as Taunt comes through, he's the last one through, because you all went for him, it closes again. Is Ellie here? Yeah, she's that right there. That was freaking awesome. I tell her thank you and throw another rock at her. <laughs> you throwing another rock? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Four. Okay, this time, uh, as you throw it, she just uh, catches it in her hand and says, you really need to keep these to yourself, and just lobs it to you. I catch it. You're not great at first impressions. Weird, and I like weird, and I had to test it. Well, you didn't even say what the fuck you're te- All right, you know what, we'll If talk she later. knew I was testing it. We'll talk it. later. You haven't hit her with a fucking rock yet. Of course she knew you were gonna throw the rock. Where are you going from here? You can't tell us. Far, 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 far away. That's shit. Um, will we see you again? I hope not, but maybe. The fuck does that mean? Well, you seem to be doing okay now. You're on track, but if you see me again, it means I had, because you weren't, and if you weren't, that means something else is happening instead. Yeah, but how else are you going to teach me that badass song? Oh! Oh, yes! For pleasure! Yes! Absolutely! <laughs> yes, the pleasure song. Mm. I'd like to learn it. Sure, but... It'll probably be a while from now. I don't know when. We'll see. I gotta pick up a stick. You see another riff start to form next to her. I'm gonna walk up to her. What is she doing? She holds her, her loot up as a, and, and kind of looks at you with a raised brow. Oh, the stick like is kind of down at my side. Looks like she's ready to strum something. She says, you gonna throw more nature things at me? No. She will whip your ass. I, I believe that to be true. Kind of has to, I gotta try. You can just want to poke her with the stick. Mm-hmm. He wants to, he wants to know if you're real. Oh. And she holds her loot in one hand, just holds her hand out to you. I drop the stick and shake her hand. You shake her gnomish hand. Okay, <laughs> well, I guess that's that. You all st uh, stay safe, keep doing what you're doing, and, you know, just, you know, don't die. You too, uh, Professor Tumblestrom. She grins widely and nods at you, and just smiling, and just giving you nods, like, you know, goodbye. But then she looks towards Tonk, and her expression, like suddenly starts getting a bit sad. And she just stares at him for maybe about two extra seconds and then nods and steps through that riff and it immediately <laughs> closes. I want to immediately look at uh, Tonk and see why she would look sad. What does Tonk look like? Smelly or something? What was that? She got all 
she's she was she mean mugging me? Oh. She looked sad. She was all smiles at you all, and she looked at me and just frowned. What'd you do? Did you steal something from her? I didn't do anything! Were you throwing rocks? No, he was. I saw it. <laughs> Three times. And he was gonna hit with that stick. I was not gonna hit her with a stick. You were gonna hit her with I that stick. I wasn't. That was the you test. You were gonna take that I stick. I had no intention of hitting her with a stick. I should have taken the stick from you. I had no intention of hitting her with a stick. I just wanted to see if she would react to the stick to see if she knew that I I wasn't gonna hit her with a stick. See? Oh, you I think not, she knew I was going to throw the rocks at her. Throw rocks at me. I throw rocks at I you. But I think she knew she did, wasn't going to get hit with the stick. Why, why would she look at you all sad? Uh, you, you tell me. I, I don't She's know. Your, 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 your teacher. She just, she just picks <laughs> someone out and just get all sad at Speaking them? Speaking of that. I've never seen that before. What? Was always like that? Yes. Yeah. Did it ever make you wonder? Professor Tumblestrom kept me wondering, yes. Be honest, she's quite, even... quite good at what she does. She looks like does she's a she crazy do? lady. A bit, yes, um, but perhaps you need to be a bit touched to be that good with magic sometimes. Oh, I know where she's touched. I know. I get it. She's screwy in the head. Regardless, she's quite proficient in the arcane arts. Clearly. Uh, yeah, and yes, and there's a reason more. she is tenured professor at the Bards College. She was your professor. One of them. Very impressive. Not an easy job to get. Which was is she... all the more strange that she would leave. Wait, did you graduate? Were you done with your studies? I did finish my studies, yes. Hmm. I think I made her mad by throwing the rocks at her. Definitely, yes. Do you think she understood why I was doing it? I feel like we need to find a, like a social, like, class that you could take. I don't go throwing rocks at everybody. You do, exactly. You do, do different weird shit with everybody. <laughs> I, I had a theory that I wasn't ever going to hit her with a rock. Mm -hmm. Because she knew I was going to hit her. How many rocks was it going to take before your theory was... Honestly, cool. until I hit her. So, endlessly then? Yes. You realize that how that's a problem? Did I ever throw rocks at you? You've done other things. What have I ever done? Strange to you. Previously, we had about another day's walk, which we do not have now, so there's not nearly enough time for me to go down the list. Good point. I'm just saying... She's a very special, unique person. I was just curious. Do you have a thing? No, no, just <laughs> for the unknown, yes. It's the summer of love. I have a wife. She was just... I don't see her here. Oh, I get oh. it. Yeah, that's no. it. Yeah. Yep. Gnomes no. and gnomes. Yep. You can't deny she... Wait, wait, wait. You assume my wife is a gnome. She's a gnome, right? She's a gnome, right? She's a gnome, right? What does she look right? like, Mr. Ravenden? Tell me all the details about your wife. Well, that's for another time. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden he doesn't have time for questions. Oh, yeah, <laughs> now look at that, yeah. yeah. No stones to throw at that one. Look, Professor... <laughs> <laughs> Professor Tumblestrom is too busy for relationships. I didn't... I just... She was an unknown, mm -hmm. and I wanted to figure out, and I didn't figure anything You're, out. There's not Very enough strange. time on this planet. Think she'll be figure. back? Well, according to her, I fucking hope not. Is that a bad thing that we saw her? According to her, it was fine. Okay. You said we were doing good, and we were doing everything we were supposed to. Even throw rocks at her, I guess. But well, whatever the hell we've stumbled into, it's some real freak shit. What makes me worried is I didn't come here for freak shit. Came here to do a job. That's the thing with freak shit. You don't look for it, it finds you. It comes out of you. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it does. 
Honk knows all about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point. Um, so you said we're just a bit outside of Phandalin? Yeah, we're like 300 feet from one of the nearby gates. Oh, we should probably uh, update Sister Grail about what happened. Right. I'll give her all three vials. No, 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 no. Not all, not all three, right? That's a bit much. I did start with one. Okay. And every time I'll see her, I'll give her another one. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> like that. No. See if she likes it first. We'll call it the scent of Khaled. I, uh, we're, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I chuckled. <laughs> sorry about that, buddy. I didn't hear you. Uh, gonna go ahead into the the entrance. Just gonna start walking. Uh, are we gonna pass uh, Darren's house? Uh, let me take you to the Fandolin map and show you. And uh, also, is it like same time of day as it was when we entered the? Yeah. Did any time rift? pass, or was it instantaneous? Instantaneous. Very strange. You have a strange I'm character on your hands. Hmm. So, her loot was very different from yours. Yes, I imagine. I mean, she has a few. Oh, in that at brief period you were holding that loot, you felt some intense arcane energy just emanating off of it. Did it um, make me feel uncomfortable? Or tingly with excitement. Like this is probably more tingly if you had a chance to study it. Okay. Some of the most proficient bards that I ever saw, they were capable with many instruments the way a seasoned fighter may be capable with multiple weapons. They all have a different use, different purpose. They channel things differently. So um, so that's one I looks pretty familiar. I believe she's had that for some time. You guys are approaching from right here. Not from the sound. It's a blurry ass picture. Is it or blurry? I need glasses. Oh, my bad. Oh Jesus, yeah, it's super okay. blurry. Okay. We'll, we'll probably, no, we'll probably just though. run. We'll probably just run an HDMI from the computer up there. There's a real map. You want to pull it out of that that curtain real quick? Real map. Yes. And it's even labeled, so you know what's what. You got it. Whoa. The one on top of it. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, stream is behind. Stream is showing the uh, teacher. That was like way longer than we've been here for. <laughs> Regal Shepherd. Very nice. Hey. It's like he's really here now. Older, but still here. <laughs> Stubbs! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going um, to so rub my stone now. <laughs> we're coming up from the southwest. Mm -hmm. So we're actually coming in from a different direction than when we left, because we left out of the north. Correct. Well, she brought us to the south gate. Oh, well. Either way. For a reason, right? Must have been. What's something new that we haven't been to? Or is there anything that we should stop at? Well, you see the road ahead of you, you're, you know as the Miner's Trail, leads more south, maybe to some mines that are near Phandalin itself. Um, but north of you, you see it just leads into town. There's a house off to the west on the trail, as well as a few houses off to the east. You know one of them to be the Phandalin Miner's Exchange up ahead. Do we have any business with him? Uh, no, specifically, he got kicked out because he was stealing. But he also got a job. No, we had a job. We had a job from her. Yeah, but we didn't do it. Oh, we didn't do it. We didn't kill Glass Staff. Yeah. Oh. So it's just the stealing thing. Oh. But, but you still have that piece of stone you're working on, right? Yeah, Where? yeah, yeah. I am. I'm working on it. Don't I'm, rush me. I'm. I'm not. Far be for me to rush an artist in their work. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be done when it's done. Can't rush. Rush art. No, no, no. It takes as long as it takes. I completely understand. All right. Um, maybe we go talk to Sister Grail first. How are you feeling? Like I'm what? sorry? You feeling good? 
I'm feeling pretty good. I'm yep. ready to tell her. Yep. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at me? you like a ch- <laughs> tap on your chest. <laughs> All right. You I'm excited like to see, see her? I am. How are you feeling? I'm pretty feeling. You nervous? Right. Don't be nervous. <laughs> I'm going to have uh, Wesley come down to me. I'm like, come here. Come here. I'm going to sniff you a little bit. Do you stink? Uh, I smell like whatever. Um, I smell like blood that was washed off, I guess. All right. I'm going to use my magic tinkering to make you smell like lavender and cedar. Oh, that smells lovely, Mr. Ravenden. Hopefully she thinks so, too. All right. I, th- I think I'm ready. Right, Mr. Stonezong? Uh, you s- Did you put that on yourself? No. Well, it's potent stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah you gonna, are you going to give it to her? All of them? Just, just one? Oh, yeah. He didn't put the perfume on. I made him smell good with magic tinker. Oh, okay. It's confusing because you're holding the perfume, but you, you didn't use your perfume when you did some stuff. Okay, you smell fine. Yeah, have fun. Okay. I mean, why are you asking me? I don't even know. I'm uh, <laughs> and, Sorry for asking you, Mr. Stone Dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as uh, as we're about to, I guess, turn and, and walk, I'll I'm gonna I want to riz you up. I'm gonna play like a like a sick like Leonard Skinner like lead on the loot. And uh, along with that, I, I, I'm not, I don't have anything ready right now, but I'll sing something about love uh, and well, give you um, a bit. bardic inspiration. Hey. Okay. Wesley, Wesley's ready. He's, he's, he's marching up on there to the, um, to the, the Luck Shrine. Okay. So all of you, are all of you heading with him? Yeah, but... I would imagine we're keeping a little bit of distance, like yes. maybe 20, don't, 25 don't get too far. Like we'll, we'll get in like the, the general town square area mm-hmm. until we see I think, uh, yeah, spread out a like, little bit. And then it's like, no, well, I mean, it's fine. We're hanging out. He can go talk to his girlfriend. We're over here. <laughs> I, I'm sitting there smoking. Do you, do you smoke? Do you want a cigar? I'll take a cigar. All right, so I pass out the cigars. And it's before he walks off, I'll unscrew my whisk, or flat <laughs> flask of whiskey, and I'll hand it to him. Take a quick swig of this. Okay, can give you a little more confidence. Okay. Quick. Wah. Yep. Wah. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Have, have you ever had alcohol before? Yeah, I had, remember I got drunk that one time. Okay, you only had one. call that so girl you... a bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was a bitch. She was a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> All right, so you, you feel uh, a little more fire in your chest Whoa. now, Leslie, because you start Whoa. making your way there, too. Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, on y'all's way there. Uh, I mean, there's people. You know, there's, it's a town. People are coming back and forth down the trail. Nothing abnormal. It's just you know, happy, cheery town time. But as you cross this spot right here, uh, you hear a couple people walking past you uh, towards the town green as well, uh, mumbling something about. I can't believe we have someone selling magic stuff now. Wow, just oh. just mumbling about some some. New vendor and that down. catches my attention. Can I completely distracted? Go where? Huh? Where, 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 where's the magic item? Oh, oh, oh it's a uh, in uh, the gentleman points behind him down the road he came from, down this way, and says, uh, all the way at the end next to the orderly farm, some old wizard set up there. He's a uh, he's a bit weird, but wow, he he sells magic stuff. That's crazy. I look at plan. I'm like, I, I uh, I'm. Not anywhere in the realm of paying attention. Like I'm watching, I'm watching my boy. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you, so you, Mr. Ravenden, I need you. I'm, I'm feeling. I'm gonna run back towards you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, but oh, I thought you'd already kind of started to walk. Oh off. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, there's nothing that would distract me. From yeah, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm watching him. <laughs> I hear none of this. I see them kind of like walking with him, and then I like, I'm gonna stick with the group, but I'm, oh, I want to go. Okay, so you all are approaching the town center as well, heading mm-hmm. to the where Sister Grail. Yeah, Grail. Yeah, Grail. 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 Um, Grail. But as you're heading there, we're gonna take a quick break. Hey. So give us about ten minutes. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
And we are back. So, uh, we had just got back to Fandolin, thanks to a taxi from Miss Elliewick Tumblestrom, who has introduced herself to the players. Uh, specifically Flynn, who had a little bit of a rapport with her to begin with from the college. Uh, but right now, there's two things in everyone's mind. Well, one thing on most of your minds. Uh, Wesley is on his way to talk to Sister Grail. While Wedge is very curious about some magic shop that may have opened up, but all of you are headed to Sister Grail first at the her little uh, chapel, which uh, is the Shrine of Luck, if you all remember. <laughs> and Flynn's, uh, Flynn's making sure Tonk is looking his best now, adding on his beard. <laughs> All of you are walking through the, the main town square. And children are playing, folks are laughing, and people, some people are yelling at each other. It's another day in town. Um, it's like he's here. As you uh, approach the shrine, you don't see Sister Grail outside right now, but it is a, it does have a little small temple behind it. Are you going inside? Uh, yeah, what's it look like around? Is there anyone crowded or anything? No. There's no one there? Nope. Yeah, I'm gonna um, go through the temple. Is it? How does it look for... Do you still have uh, Mr. Raven and two with you? I think it's with you. Okay. Do you want him with you? Uh, would it be I nice would be to have think, I wouldn't be thinking about it right now. Okay. What is it like a... Does it look like I could go in there? Yeah, doors, just double doors. You can just go in. Them. Yeah, just go in there. Okay, you open the little doors and step inside. And uh, it looks like how you would expect a typical church to look. Except in this case, they worship... Uh, the, the goddess of luck, Lady Tamor, if you remember. Uh, as you go inside, you see no one sitting in the pews right now. And you just see uh, Sister Grail right now. It looks like she's in mid-prayer up at the altar at the end. Just having her hands together like this with her eyes shut. I'm going to walk up to her and wait. Uh, all right, you wait a couple moments. And then uh, she says... Wesley. And she opens her eyes and looks down and sees you. Hello, Sister Grail. I, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, of course not. No one uh, comes in the middle of the day. Unfortunately, she looks around her shrine a bit and just sees how empty it is. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're all here, actually. Are, are all of you inside? Did we go inside? Oh, or shit, are we going to like, stand outside so we get over here? I, I would not have gone inside. Or you know what? No, I'd go inside. Does it open up just to a big yeah. room? So yeah, can we like sit fuse, in the back fuse, of fuse, it? Fuse, fuse, yeah. yeah, I'll just... I'll sit in, yeah, on the back pew. Yeah, if we're all doing that, I will take out Mr. Ravenden too mm -hmm. and let him scurry a little bit closer. Can we hear them clearly? Yeah. Oh, there's then, echoes in the temple as long yeah, as no one else is I'm there. just going to keep him in the watch. I'll play, I'll play like <laughs> a, like a jazzy style, like, tune on the loop. Why are your friends not coming up here? Uh, um, uh, they thought maybe I could handle this by myself. No, oh, fair enough. Well, so, did you find out anything? We did. Um, we gave the comb like you asked, and um, the Banshee said she traded the book to a necromancer named Zernoth in the city of Erebor a hundred years ago. Is and, that right? Um, I also got you this. <laughs> I'm gonna um, take out the the vial of perfume. This is for you, Sister Grail. We 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 ended up killing a bunch of people. And we found this <laughs> this perfume there, and we thought, well, it'd be nice if you had it. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> Wesley, I'm not sure. You killed a bunch of people for this? Well, not for this. They were evil, so they had to be put down. Well, I understand that some probably need to go sometimes, but the way you word it just sounds awful. She takes the, the vial from you <laughs> and says, uh, what made them evil? Um, because we were supposed to kill them that made them evil. Wesley, that's not how that works at all. What if a really bad person told you to kill a really good person? And you didn't know it was a really bad person? Well, then I would ask someone else. What if the next person is really bad? I'm not so sure. That's something you should figure out. You need to be careful, Wesley. I mean, I'm, well, I don't doubt what you're saying is true. In some cases, things are a lot more than just black and white, especially in my field. She opens up the, the vial gave her and smells it. 
Well, this smells wonderful. This is a... I don't know what type of perfume, but it's it smells very good. Thank you for this. No problem. Uh, she, she dips her finger a bit and rubs it uh, a little bit on her cheek. I have two more, but I'm not supposed to give them to you until the next time I see you. <laughs> next time you see me, but you mm-hmm. have two more. <laughs> 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 oh, I appreciate it. That's very sweet, Wesley. Let him cook. Let him cook. He's got this. Um, um, you, and she corks it and young. puts it in her... <laughs> Uh, robe pocket. Uh, Sister Creole, I think uh, your luck is helping me because I got stabbed and I got impaled and I I got the absolute life knocked out of me. And um, I'm gonna look at you. <laughs> you like turn back? Cause I'd be like behind you. Oh really? Like in the back? We're in the back. We're in the back. Oh, okay. I, like how close I'm are you guys? I'm standing up in the pew, like leaning, like full on standing, leaning toward the other one, like this, just listening. All right, just just the embarrassment. I guess I guess I'm feeling a little like nervous. Um, I kind of tip my hat like, go go uh, go. Thank thank you for the blessing. And um, may I have another? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly. I, I feel compelled to ask. Uh, so you went to visit the Banshee Agatha, and you got that information. Which, by the way, thank you very much. I need to write a letter very soon about that. But you said you got stabbed and whatnot too. Did you mm-hmm. encounter some bandits? Uh, yes. On the way to getting your perfume, those evil people, they they nearly killed me, but we were able to, to do our job and kill them. Where did Wesley you saved our asses! <laughs> where did you find... She looks back at you playing and just... Where did you find those evil people, Wesley? Oh, shit. Can I say asses in a I'm not going to lie to her. I know, I know. Give me a second. I have it down. I shit. mess up. Oh, Maybe fuck. they heard masses. Hmm. It was the masses. Shit, was it the women tour? Oh, the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I be smoking in here? <laughs> can I? Can I make a like a like a ask you if the what, wyvern tour is the place? Okay, it's inside the wyvern tour. <sighs> so bandits were holed up there, and you just you went in and took care of them, and that's where you got this perfume from. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I should say, um, even if you're ordered to do something, you should always question if it's the right thing to do. In this case, it sounds like it was. Acceptable, so good job. But Thanks, Sister Grail. Just He true. killed like six assholes <laughs> by himself. <laughs> Mass holes. Mass, Mass holes. holes. Just know that some can <laughs> still be redeemed and sometimes death isn't always the best answer. But you performed really well, it sounds like. I didn't even ask you to take out a bandit camp. You just did that of your own volition, I'm guessing? Oh, this is for someone else. Couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> I'm just trying to raise but my boy But we found up. the perfume on the way, so we thought it'd make a good gift. Well, I would say that dealing with uh, information gathering and hostile threats when necessary definitely would warrant this. And uh, she reaches into her uh, robe pocket and fumbles around for a moment and then pulls out a small emblem and says you see I actually haven't told you necessarily who I am either and she shows you this small emblem if I can find it there it is hold on just a second come on come on there it is (laughs) Uh, you see this small uh, it looks like maybe a, a harp? yeah, a harp, on uh, attached to a crescent moon uh, in her hand. She says, "I'm actually with an organization called the Harpers. We tend to specialize in information gathering, uh, without other folks knowing, and dealing with small or large threats, depending with uh, small groups." And we can hear her. She's talking a lot quiet, quieter now. Oh. I'll, I'm gonna change the the tune. That I'm playing to, uh, I want to play uh, Whitney Houston's "I Will Always Love You." <laughs> and she just looks to the back again. She like she's just what? What are they? It's a pleasant song. What, what are they? <laughs> uh, he has a great teacher. He knows a lot of songs. And you you did this with your your friends, of course, right? Mm-hmm. If you'd like to, I am at liberty to offer you a position in the Harpers if you want to join, or your friends too if you want to tell them. Oh, let let me ask them. Hey guys, don't try not to yell it. What's up? Try to keep it on the 
hush that I'm a member of the Harpers, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, except with your friends. Okay. I'll keep... What do you need? Sweet, some of <laughs> Wait, he's asking for backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, kinda... I'll like, kind of do like a little dance. I'm still playing. So I walk up. <laughs> wow, that's... Quite <laughs> romantic <laughs> with all of hmm. Well, okay. I got my brooch off. Have a little flame going. <laughs> what are they? What, what is this? What are your friends doing? They're helping me <laughs> talk to you. I really? You mm -hmm. do why? You ask her out yet? What? <laughs> he uh did you do the perfume? I did. Not all of them, though, like you said. You're not supposed to say that. Uh, what's Tonk doing? Like, I look back at Tonk. Tonk just had, a, like, a look on his face the whole time. I haven't been saying anything. Well, you're not helping. Well, he just needs to ask her. Just do it. Hey, he wants to date you. <laughs> uh, uh, you want to go eat sometime? We can. Sure. Oh, I'd like that. Absolutely. But business first, pleasure later. Um, dinner my later. boy. Dinner later. <laughs> Let's well, not get ahead of ourselves. Well, company and food is pleasure, is it not? Work in a temple. <laughs> you assume too much, little one. <laughs> I switch over to uh, My Heart Will Go On by uh, the Titanic song. Oh, the Dion. Of... Do, do, do. Celine, Celine Dion. Dion, yeah. When you all walk up, she still has her palm out with that emblem in her hand, too. And all of you could easily see it. Anybody, uh, did anybody, would we recognize that symbol? I know I wouldn't. Uh, that's up to your character. I, I definitely would. Um, but I, I, I don't see it. I'm, I'm too busy playing. <laughs> what would that kind of check with that be? Um, that'd be a personal check. The Harpers are, uh, I wouldn't say they're massively known, but they're an organization that if you're a well-read person, you surely have heard about them at one point or another. It's up to you as Wedge whether or not you think you would have heard of them. Oh, he would be a well-read person. You'd be aware it's an organization that specializes in information gathering. Typically for the good of the realm. Is there any chance I would have met him dealing with... Uh, met a Harper? Yeah, through the fulcrum? Maybe one or two, a couple times, yeah. Knowingly or unknowingly? Most likely unknowingly, okay. unless it was a very specific reason to know they were a harbor. They tend to keep that to themselves, unless uh, other circumstances warrant it. Okay. So, interested, Wesley? I, th I think that's that's a good idea. What are we interested in? She wants us to 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 know if we want to be harpers. The fuck did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I stop playing immediately. And I look over at Sister Grail. You say you're the fucking Harpers. I am. And she takes them and I'm just... I'm in. Oh, good. We definitely need more members. Especially here. Wait, are you the only one here? I am the only one assigned here. Hmm. Not anymore. <laughs> fucking Harpers. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we all get like a... Pins? Was there like an initiation we need to do? No. We just did a, a whole comb thing. Just my word and an emblem would do. You have extras. I have a few. I was told I could recruit if absolutely necessary. And seeing as you just dealt with a banshee and came unscathed and apparently dealt out with a whole group of bandits just for fun, <laughs> I'd say this warrants it. Yep. Wesley was like... These foul uh, creatures must be purged from this earth. They are sowing destruction and reaping uh, bloodshed. And we couldn't have done it without him. You already said you're going to dinner with him, right? I did. Okay, all right. Anyways, mm -hmm. Harper shit. Uh, yeah. Just one thing about Wesley. He's, he told me that he normally identifies bad people by simply asking someone, and if they say they are, he, he will kill them? Okay. In we're this work, case, we're working on it. Yes, but in this case, they did try to kill him first. So it was defense. Oh, self-defense? Mm, yes. He didn't, like... It's all in the service of the greater good. I see. Well, we could talk about that later, too. But I suppose uh, 
Are all of you in then? Do you want to be a harper? Wait, we need to keep this on the lowdown, right? The harpers, it's a secret, some secret shit. It is. If word gets out oh, that I'm a harper, fuck. and you are too, there are other people that will maybe do something about it. Well, <laughs> I rue the day. I rue the day. They will rue the day that they fuck with this tight crew. I'm in. I'm a consider myself a seeker of knowledge. So it just kind of feels right. And she looks towards Tonk. And Tonk says, I don't really like harps. It's uh, it's sim it's a symbolic thing. Um, Are you doing it? I, I'm doing it. I'm in. Is everyone else doing it? I'm yeah. Doing it. Well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Look. It's like he's here. <laughs> uh, I've been looking for... Or a harper for quite some time. You're right here under our nose. You, oh yeah, you always you always wanted to be a harp harper a harper. Yes. Well, look, boy. Okay. Well, look at that. You found one. Now, now you are one. And Started now I'm from the bottom. Now we're here. I, I never wanted to be a harper, but I guess I'm one too. You are now. Um. It's a. This is kind of a big deal. Why does this feel like it's not a big deal? Oh. Uh -oh. Are you talking to Tonk or Sister Grail? Uh, oh, sorry, I'll look at Sister Grail. <laughs> Why doesn't this feel like a bigger deal? I thought I I pictured this moment in my mind. Has this been a goal of yours? Lot. Yes. Why is this Why is this so easy? No, Which trouble are you in? He not brings up a, a good lot. point. I mean, there are other organizations at play here. That's mainly the reason why I'd like to. Get a few more people I can trust. To Wait, what happened to the last group? I look at the. Does she have the other like symbols? Is uh, there not, blood not, on any? Not on, on her person. Okay, no, she'd have to go fetch them. <laughs> the old, like, Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> harpers for everyone. What? What were there? Are you, there no other harpers here? Why are you the only one? I was the only one sent because typically you don't want a large group at the same time investigating the same thing. It draws too much attention unless you happen to be just a group of. Random adventurers instead. That's, so, that's fair. Since we're in on the whole thing, right? What are you investigating? Why are you here? She looks towards the chapel doors and then back to you and says, A few reasons. Uh, that book you found information on is very, very, very powerful, and some very, very bad people want it. And the Harpers are trying to get to it first. Are you familiar with the Zentarum by chance? Zentarum? She nods. I've heard of the fuckers. Wait, what's the rules in this temple? Cursing. Well, typically we try to avoid that if we can. Thing is just us right now, I really don't care. All right, fuck it. <laughs> Continue. I believe they have an operative or tivs in town somewhere. Um, not sure where yet or who, but they're here. I was looking into that, and... I'm going to pull out my cube and start putting this into the cube. The waiter, so you don't have to take notes. The last thing <laughs> they they really weren't too adamant about, but they said just to keep an eye out for for weird rock shards. Like, magical rock shards. Is Zentarum said this? No. My superiors did. Oh. Uh... Anything about said rock shards being embedded in any skulls? Oh. Uh. No, just that some reports of some odd goblins were around. With clay-like skulls? Hmm? Stretch back? I don't think they're clay skulls. Long, like, stupid heads. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a cone. That was in the report, so you have heard of them. We have. We haven't seen a few either. times. Yeah. Look at you. Fine harpers already. Information gathered that you weren't even asked together yet. Fuck Has it. anybody said anything about lanky goblins with crystals in their head, like crystal horns? That sounds like magical rock shards to me. You found something like that? We found a drawing we of found it. A, I show her the drawing. As far as my priorities when I was sent here, that was on the lowest on the list, but I suppose if you found it, then that's fairly relevant. Any idea where this thing is? You found the creature, you said drawings. Yeah, we just a drawing on a cave. But no, no else? creatures, no creatures. Oh, boo. Well. Okay. And uh, I'll produce a map on the thing and I'll kind of ping where it's like this is the roughly where the cavern is. 
the the, cave. the wyvern wyvern tor. Yep. Right. I see. Hmm. So you said that you believe there's Zentrum operatives here. Yes. In Fandolin. I know there is. You know, do you who? know who? I do not know who. And I do not know where. Is I it do... that glass staff prick? Wait, has anybody seen or heard from him? He managed to elude us. Glass staff. Glass staff. Glass staff. Who was the glass staff again? He was the sh- little shithead that was hiding in the manor. Oh, causing trouble here. Doing the things with the with, red brands. With the red brands, yeah. Right. Um, it could could have been maybe that would make sense actually. But how would I don't you know. know these operatives? You know they're here. But you don't know who they are. Do they have a devious look to them? <laughs> the guilds tend to all operate in a similar fashion, as far as recognition. For instance. Uh, while many don't use uniforms, they'll use an identifier to show that they're a member, and she'll hold up her harbor pen again. I believe the Zentarum have something similar of their own making, so if That's you... That's kind of a little on the nose, isn't it? Harper's harp. Well, that's why you don't let this get into the wrong hands. If you get killed, I guess that's that, but... Yeah, but how do you let other harpers know that you're a harper if you don't know they're a harper? Well, the only way is to be the one who shows first. Okay. I don't think you'll be able to convince someone of the, the symbol. The <laughs> it just if you're flashing you have a it, better, better idea. No. It's not necessarily a secret emblem. I mean, there are no. He's talking shit about the. I'm not talking about the. the, the you are being very <laughs> defensive today, just because I threw rocks at somebody you know. You threw rocks at one of your friends. That was I, a close friend. I was testing a theory, and she passed. See, Wesley, that's that bad thing. He threw rocks at someone and they didn't deserve it. That's not a good thing. That I, makes him a bad person. No, no, no. I did not. <laughs> I'm starting to like you more and more. Throw rocks at her because she deserved <laughs> it. I threw rocks at it at her to test a theory. You don't test someone by throwing things at them. What if I just, I don't know, what if I just started shooting magic missiles at you? Did you not I, send I us I slowly shift a... over where I'm like standing next to her, like looking you, at... You tested us by sending us to a banshee. No, nope, not a necessarily. A very dangerous task. That was not a for test. For people you did not know. It it was a test and we passed and now we're harping. But we had all the information up front. You took it as a job. Specifically right. for a reward. We agreed to it. Specifically for this us. reward. And she goes under this this uh, podium that she's at to the bottom. And you hear some glass clanking. And she takes out three healing potions and sets them on top. This. Remember? I forgot about that. Fair. <laughs> she smiles at you. Not throwing rocks at her. <laughs> she didn't throw rocks at you. <laughs> oh, would you, uh, your emblems as well. Wait here for just a moment. No. All right. She turns around and heads in back. Uh, Holy for a moment. shit. The fucking Harpers. I've read about it's them. the big times. Look, this, this is, is the very key. Where in? How did you know so much? Of the Harpers? I, I mean... Just know that they're a force for good, and they kind of work in the shadows, and they're the best chance I have at pulling my family out of the muck. That's good. You've never heard of the Harpers? I I read about them, never met one. That's why they're so fucking awesome. Now we're <laughs> Harpers. Nobody's gonna fuck with us now. Yeah. Well, no, they, they still will because they wouldn't know. We can't let anybody know. Yeah, but it's not the, something we can talk about. We're the Silk Coast right. Barbers. That's reason enough. Right. Wesley, it's vital you don't tell anybody that we are Harpers. Okay. That's rule number one now. Okay, I will not tell anyone. No one. No one. Not a soul. Not a soul. Not a hey, rock. Wesley. Nothing. Wesley. Did, uh... Miss Grell invite you to the Harpers? She did. No one. No one. <laughs> Not even other Harpers? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, you see Sister Grail emerging from uh, the back office again. And uh, she has her hands clutched like this as she approaches you all and then splays out four badges and holds them out. Please, if you will, keep this to yourself. Keep it out of sight. I like kneel down and take it. Oh. How pleasant. And she hands it to you. I'm a little less ceremonial with it and just kind of pin it on the inside of my vest. Only show that in an absolute circumstance. Is there a phrase that instead of just showing it that like a 
the moon is brighter at night? Sometimes, when it's deemed necessary. Okay. Right. I'm going to have one of my rats come out. I'm going to do fatty, and he's going to swallow the emblem. Oh. My. Oh, and, and then I forgot I did something. Oh, yeah, do you remember my rats? I taught them a trick for you. And the rats just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> are, are they are they sentient? And then right when they do that, right back on, up my sleeve. Like are they are those actual rats now, or is, are they something else? They're rats. A rat can't give finger guns, last I checked. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do a lot of things they can't normally do with my help. What if you didn't help them at all? Could they still do things? Well, they probably wouldn't still be alive. I don't, I don't understand. So right now, if you took that larger rat and just set it on the ground, what would it do? Well, it would probably do nothing. Why? Because it needs it needs me to help it move. Oh dear. So they're... Those aren't familiars, or those aren't uh, trained creatures. Those are just creatures you exert your full authority on them, right? Well, I guess so. Well, that's, I guess they're just rats, but I don't know. Many, everything tends to have a soul. Just be careful how you use that, I suppose. Well, me and, you, me and these rats were friends before they became like this. And I, I didn't want them to, I didn't want to lose them. So I thought this was the best way to, for us all to stay together. Hold on. Did you, so they didn't die and you made these. You... The rats were healthy, and you'd turn them into this? No, they were they were dying, but oh, I could I could help them. What's the where are you from? I'm I'm gonna interject and just kind of clear my throat. I'm like, we need to be getting going. He sounds like he needs someone to talk to. You at dinner tomorrow yes. night? I would be glad to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where where will I meet you? At the Sleeping Giant. Works fine. Okay, I'll be there. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure he gets there. Hold on, that was the good one, right? What's the safe one? Stonehill Inn? Oh, yeah, the Sleeping Giant is the, yeah, is the bad giant one. Yeah. Stonehill Inn. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, I'll say, I'll say you I don't, don't want to go is. to the Sleeping Giant. We've been there, bartender, uh, real asshole. If that's where Stone, she wants to go. No, <laughs> no the, the, the Stonehill will be much the more... I'll meet you at the good end. Okay. Yeah, the good one. It's in the good part of town, about 30 feet that yeah. way. <laughs> Across the street. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose if you have anything else to... Report. Please keep me in the loop. If you I, don't, that's I have, fine. I, I have a follow-up question. Absolutely. Right. I'm gonna now pick that up we're the potions of healing. Uh, and I kind of take my hat off. I put the Harper pen like on the inside of my hat. Um, now that we're on the same page, um, what the fuck with that banshee? No, oh, Agatha. The spell book. What's up with that? Sometimes our orders don't come with a lot of details, but apparently that book is very, very important to someone or something higher up. And Within apparently the another. Say what now? Within the Harpers. Within the Harpers, correct. Uh, our organization got word that another organization, again, the Zentarum, also wanted to know the whereabouts of that book. That's the whole reason we wanted to know where it was. We don't think that should fall in the Zentarum hands without us knowing why. If it's something they want, it's something we don't need them to get. Correct. That's all uh, I need to know. They tend to do... I know they do underworld transactions and whatnot. Perhaps they're just doing a job for someone, but I have word that they want to keep this within the organization, and that's what alarmed us. Hmm. Well. So if you find that out, fantastic. But if you don't, it's fine. We have a lead, and I can write back, and we can go from there. All right. Uh, I guess we'll be on our way, then. You know where to find me. All right. Um, <laughs> I'll, uh, so do we, do we have, like, code names? I don't think those are necessary unless we someone knows. Use the ones we used before. You think we could? If you really wanted to. I prefer personally just Grail. Weren't you? You are Golden Fox. <laughs> golden Fox. Well, that's. Code name. Fox. Didn't you tell me, you told me some weird names before, didn't you? Or am I imagining things? You're imagining things. I, 
think you're imagining things. I think that was someone else. Okay, very well. Golden Fox, if that's a bit weird, I'm not going to lie, but you know what? I like weird. Sure. You, what's your code name? Uh, uh, not Wesley. No, we'll come back to you. <laughs> code name. I think I'm gonna stick with the one we had before and just go back with Oh shit, we did have code names, that's right. Well, that wasn't a code name, those were just different names. It needs to be cool. We're in a secret fucking society now. I'll, I'll look over at Tonk. Let's, let's talk you about are it. code yeah. name Wet Blanket. No, I don't want to be wet blanket. All right, then in that case. Maybe rock rubber. Tonk stone dong, it's tonk stone dong. No, stone we, it dong. needs to be, it needs to be like a, in case we can't use our real name. Okay, then I'll be rock dong. <laughs> <laughs> Code name rock dong. I am with it. All right. That works, that works. Um, you're good at it. You give me one. Give me a name. Well, fuck. Give me a name. Come on. Make All it right. make sense. You are codenamed Twinkle Toes. Mm. I do like a dance. I accept it. New. Oh, we can call him the rat. Yes. Codename. Oh. <laughs> Although that's kind of mean. I don't know. Mm. Well, again, on the nose, like the Harper thing. Yeah, they might be able to put it together, like rat, the rat, and then he's using rats. Oh, what, what about the summer boy? Hmm. We use that openly. Oh, we do. We do. Hmm. I don't know. I'm out of ideas. I'll be Velvet Thunder. <laughs> You're Velvet Thunder? You're fucking right I am. Hmm. Code name Sad Boy. I don't want to be Sad Boy. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you, you come up with? Some? What do you? What do you I, want? I can't be? think. Um. Oh my! What, you do like you do like the the air rat thing, and you. you oh oh! You like rats? Code name, Lady Killer. <laughs> <laughs> but but not like that killing them, like killing them with charm. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. He does need a little bit of work on his charm, but sure. Okay, maybe Ladybug for now. I like Ladybug. Oh, Ladybug. that's cute. Ladybug. Ladybug. Yeah. All right. Golden Fox. Ladybug. Ladybug. Twinkle toes. Mm. Velvet Thunder and Tonk Rock Dong. No, no. <laughs> Just Rock Dong. Just Rock Dong. <laughs> Okay, it's gonna be hard, but I'll try. All right, this is not what we need to use regularly. This is just, just in front of her. No, yes. if if there's a situation where we need to communicate with each other and we're not at liberty to use our real names, we use our code names. Okay, I get it. All right. Is that good? I'll look back to Grail. Golden Fox, we're good. Sure. Oh, yes. Thank you, Sister Grail. <laughs> I'll be, I guess I'll be seeing you later then. Oh, did you want to meet this evening or when? Well, whenever. This evening is nice too. Very good. In that case, I'll see you this evening. Wait I'll... for me right at sundown. Okay. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta hurry things up then. What are we doing? We, we gotta hurry things up. We, there's a guy selling magic items. I'd really like to do that, and he needs new clothes. You, yes, you do. Do you know, I wasn't listening for a second. Uh, did they ask you about the guy selling magic items? Have you heard about that? I did hear a vendor rolled into town just recently, about maybe a day ago. You ran into him? I haven't checked it out quite yet. Seemed, uh, it's a wizard. I know that much. Don't really know much about him. I haven't heard of him. I have no reports of him. I should probably check that out. We can check it out for you. As official Harpers. <laughs> that could be your official first mission. And then I flash the badge at her and put it back. Never, only a last resort do that again. 
Even I was letting you know that I was one of you. Oh, we did. And that we're about to do official business. I see. I see. I understand. Hmm. Flash it again. Check it out. It'll be your first official mission. Yeah. yeah. I like, it's like, so like so grab like Tonk by the shoulders. I'm like, whoa, hey, oh, yeah. Oh, uh huh. Let's do it. Huh? Check it out. <laughs> we're going to check this fucking wizard out. Let's go. Good luck. Bye, Sister Grail. Bye, Wesley. Good walk. I like slow down and like put my arm around you. I'm like, yeah. I'm did so knee. fucking good. Dude. Oh, boring his knee. Like, yeah. yeah. All right, you guys head out of the temple, back out into the town square. Um, it is about time to stop. I'll give y'all if you want. We can make one more stop, or we can call it now. It's up to y'all. Um, I mean, I feel like this is as good a place as any. Yeah, yeah. I'd like not to do as much with um without Tonk. Without yeah. Tonk, yeah. yeah. Very well. The, the least we do, the better. In that case, we are going to head and going to go ahead and call it for now. Good job, everybody. Hey. Made it back to oh. town. No oh, inspiration. Do something. Do something right now. Damn it. Do a dance. I want to see if I can't throw another rock at that lady. This w- Just throws you. one into the distance. Did you fail again? Yes. What was it? It was a four. You know, it's because of her, you can't roll higher than a ten on that dice. It's like, it's just how it has to be. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's been another episode of Fandelvin Below the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, we will be picking up in two weeks again for our next session where we do a little bit more town business because I believe we have some more contracts we completed. We need to tell people about, collect our, our winnings. Right. So we're going to do all that. And Tonk will be here. And we'll be hey. back on Friday. This was a Saturday thing because we were missing, uh, we were going to miss a player if we didn't. But. We missed him anyway. We missed him anyway. <laughs> so. I think we're going back to Friday in two weeks. He did say we'd go back to Friday, right? Yeah, we're killing it. Uh, <laughs> I'll double check on that. There, there are fa- the other factors, but yeah, most likely back on Friday. Okay. I'll update people on the community tab as well as update the calendar uh, if I need to. Excellent. Then um, we're back next week. With Salt Marsh, where we are still in a swamp heading towards the lizard folk. I'm going to call it the Lizard Folk Landing. And we've had to deal with some stuff there, too. There's a lot of backstory stuff there. Yeah. yeah check those check those videos out, see where we ended up and where we're going. You can get a head, head start on it. Um, um, we've got some new stuff coming out probably next week. Oh! Oh, yeah. Ah, should I, t- should I say what it is? Yeah. You just wanted it. So we're trying something a little different. Uh, Mr. JD here has decided that we could maybe do a little bit of React content. So we recently watched a uh, few episodes of X-Men 97 mm-hmm. and did a little talking during it. Not too much. It's still enjoyable to watch, you know. We, we, but, uh, and at the end, gave a little review on it. And I've never seen that stuff before, so it was pretty wild for me. Did you ever watch the original series? I, I did not. I'm not actually, I'm not a huge X-Men guy. I played the arcade games and, like, a few of the console games and then seen, like, the original movies. I always knew there was something I didn't like about you. <laughs> so that being said, if... Uh... If there's anything that y'all want to see us, you know, react to or, or any other kind of content, any kind of video content you'd like to see, let us know. We're kind of open books with that right now. Except except in few a few regards. There's some things I will not do. I'm not going to see that idea here. <laughs> I'm going to do Wesley. It's Wesley, so you can imagine what his idea is, okay? As long as it can go on YouTube. <laughs> All right, I don't I don't It can. <laughs> I don't and not get us uh, blocked. Did y'all, do y'all have anything else you want to announce or say before we get out of here? Nope. All right. Well, in that case, thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Bye. Have a good one. Peace. Are they going to stay?